to the Hawa. Let's go surfing away. Let's go surfing the way. Why y'all think they got the press to outside the ice wall, man? <laughs> And where's the cap on Antarctica's chest bone? And what's up with these gateways? I mean, these are just questions we keep asking because we got to learn to ask the right questions. You might not always have these answers, man. All right, but we could say, what the fees? <laughs> you think they just made this stuff up in 1544? David Rumsey map collection? Weird animals, weird thing. But there ain't no ice on Antarctica's chest bone. And we've been getting a lot of orientation pies for a reason, Monaga, because it's time, man. <laughs> it's time that we see clearly. Everything's connected. I can't I can't talk orientation without running right into Preston John. You know what I'm saying? Press the yard. The grand Ethiopian, right? That's why they put him on the Africa tip, right? <laughs> but we're going to get, of course, that we got before that, that they were searching in the wrong Ethiopia. And even the Portuguese <laughs> ended up, you know, thinking that some king of Ethiopia was the Preston, and then he had to find out the hard way. <laughs> Because they kept searching, boss. They were searching. Then they finally came to Corveria. Corveria. <laughs> Shallow out to my cons, man. Get cozy, man. It's pressed to 139. All the way fine. <laughs> right on time. And we learned, you know, previously that this Corveria, chilling right here in so-called North America, Right where the four corners would be, right? Right in the heartland. And they still ain't talking about this, right? Because there ain't no cap over here either, my night. And this is well, you know, got some details on it too, right? Seems like there's gateways in, there's gateways out. <laughs> This is deep stuff. What's all these squiggly lines? What's happening, man? Ain't it time that we know what's happening? Ain't it time, man? Eddie, uh... Ain't it time that we understand these waters again? So, of course, we learned that this Corvera goes deep. The Corvera goes deep, but just you know, hold on to your boot bones. Because the royalty looked a lot different. We've been talking about the Germans, right? So, and here you see this uh, Holy Roman cross pati. I'm going to redrop some of this. I know that they made our screen go black on 138 at the two hour, 30 minute mark. I appreciate everybody letting me know. I don't even know. That's never happened before. You know what I mean? So that's we, we've had audio issues, but the screen go black. How can it go black if my screen ain't go black? This is crazy talk. This lets me know that they purposely plan. You know, with the drop, man. But my noggins know how to see in the dark. <laughs> we know how to go within, man, and see clearly and surf the way. So the water time my car surfing away <laughs> in the dark, man, with the black screen. Yeah, man, this is a con, man. And they tried to make a joke and call him the Prince of Congo. Prince of Congo on a visit to Portugal. But note that the prince wears European clothing and icons, a royal coronet cap with two versions of the Teutonic Knights of the Holy Roman Empire's cross. Patti on the band, the Iron Cross, version commonly used by the modern German 
military. So who's the Germans? Who's the Romans? Then they say, oh, he's from Africa, boss. <laughs> he's like, man, I just came from Germany, boss. I just came right from Europe, man. What are you talking about? These types of crosses are common on British heraldry because the current British royalty are of German extraction. Back to the Germans. We're talking a lot about that German ice wall. We're going to uh, get that part as well. I got y'all, my nagas. Anybody seeing through the dark, you about to see the light tonight. <laughs> Let's go, man. We popping off, man. All right, so it says the prince also wears around his neck another type of cross, the Teutonic Knight, the Order of the Brothers of the German House of St. Mary in Jerusalem. He's just playing dress up. <laughs> they just dress everyone up with all this on the way through the door. The Prince of Congo ain't proud enough to wear his own garments. They knew his size already. <laughs> nah, man. We're talking Congo. We're talking Khan. Or a cross of the Portuguese Templar Knights, which would be red. The Prince also wears medieval Tyrolean, Tyrolean jacket. Tyree, we're talking about, man. Tyrolean. State of the Holy Roman Empire. In the aggregate, the prince's garb suggests that he was a prince of the Holy Roman Empire boss. He's like, oh, okay, you seeing clearly, boss? They said I was from Africa, boss. <laughs> Look at the shoes. This is the Roman Empire, boss. I just want you know you to remember, right? Because we're going to go back to the German ice wall. They got all this German, German, German. We thinking Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. They talking their swastikas. We talking towels, right? Last time we showed all these towels. We're going to, no, I got you. I got you. <laughs> They're like, drop the screen with black. I got you, Drop Nation. Straight up like that. Allah, wow, how y'all really, man? We in here, man. Let's go. Let's go. Benjamin at the Dula. Y'all remember this? Hey, this one right here is foundational. Fall back. I'm going to do some reading. We're going to enjoy it, man. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk Covera. <laughs> Baba Covera. We're going to talk a little more Afghan, Afghanistan. Uh, the connect with, connection with Afghan, uh, son of Jeremiah. Or how do they say Afghan? You know, we got this first out that $1,000 book, Media of Empire. Of the Israelites, right? In addition to the historic Jewish roots of the Pathans or Pushtans described elsewhere on the Shiva Israel site, there's also speculation that the Afghan royal family has its roots in the tribe of Benjamin, right? So when they talk Afghanistan, <laughs> we're still talking the tribes of Israel. But not today we ain't, right? We're talking just Middle East, got nothing to do with you. Darkies, darkies. You ain't got nothing to do with these. This darkies. <laughs> this is just Middle East, right? The Middle East, right? You see Middle East on any of these old maps, by the way? No, they just made something up called the Middle East, man. But Afghan has nothing to do with the Middle East. Afghan has everything to do with Benjamin. I can't make this stuff up. They're telling on themselves. And Benjamin has everything to do with the tribes of Israel <laughs> originally right here in what they call the New World, which is the oldest. Because the elevation here, <laughs> these highlands are different than other places across the earth plain. The elevation here, man, let you know that we popped out from that primordial flood before many other lands even popped out the water. Which is why you got the oldest pyramids here, which is why you got, you know what I'm saying, ask, ask Kuri Mayo, Kuri Mayo take the wheel. You're talking about the oldest bodies, bodies on bodies. We talking Kalelus. That's his first published in 1635 in a book called 
Masana, I, Afghani. The tradition has it that King Saul had a son called Jeremiah, who had a son called Afghana, right? Repetition breaks the spell for my wave servers. So King Saul's grandson is Afghan, man, all right? <laughs> and Saul's the one that really ended up turning on Israel, you know, really completely, which is why Hawaii replaced Saul with King David, right? Um, Saul <laughs> ends up converting, according to this story, you know, that we got it, a couple sources. And Muhammad rewarded them in Kish's Hebrew name, was changed to Arab Arashi. Arab is a rabbi. A rabbi. But you can't be a rabbi, you know, of Muhammad if Muhammad is outside the house of Israel. We're talking Arab. We're talking Arab proper. We're talking sons of Eber. Top, top floor, right? God. So, Kish, who's Kish? Like the name of Saul's father. Saul's father is called Kish. And he's the one who was given the charge. So, Shalak, I said, Saul, his father Kish was the one given the charge. And whose name was changed to Arab Arashi by Muhammad, given the task of spreading Islam to his people. Who's his people? Benjamin, Israel. So Saul's pops, <laughs> Kish, is given the charge of spreading Islam more on more, right? Because Benjamin can't just be. Keeping the code no more. That's not good enough to Muhammad. We have to be, you know, serving their prophets and serving their God. You want to convert Israelites to Islam. Just like the Christian want to convert Israelites to Christians. <laughs> So King Saul had a son, Jeremiah, right? Which is why you got Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah chapter um, 30, verse 9, you know, talking about David, whom I will rise up. He's saying, serve Hawah, the creator, and King David, right? Right? I'm not, I'm not making this up. Y'all let me know, because this is Press of John, installment 100. And 39 balls, 139 Preston Johns. If you want to get all, all these on one flash drive, just check out the description below on how to get half off right now with your pre-order by now um, for $45, including this includes shipping in the U.S. And just hit us up. You know what I'm saying? We always work, work with monogamous, man. We always make sure you get it. You got it. And we always do our best, so. Uh, hit us up if you want all 130. Now we're going to do 139. We might do 140 by the time we uh, get everything out. So um, just look out for us, man. And, you know, you get it all uh, in one flash drive with the books, the links, you know, everything, man. So you want a flash drive full of all the drop so you don't need the Internet. You got all these hours and hours of content. Just check out the description below, man, because <laughs> you got it. You know, this is your investigation. I didn't make all this up. You know, this is your input. This is your comments, my naga. This is your books you drop in, drop library, all that. This is Jeremiah, right? We in Jeremiah. We talking Jeremiah because they talking Jeremiah. Jeremiah is the son of King Saul, who's a Benjamin. So Jeremiah knows firsthand about King David. Why? Because his son, Afghanistan, you know, Jeremiah died at the same time, about the same time King Saul's, of King Saul's death. Afghanistan was raised.
by King David and remained in the royal court. So when we read about these courts, you know, Genghis Khan's court, Presser John's court, you know, 72 kings paying him tribute, all this stuff like that, put it together. All right, and his court is, you know, just like David, you know, his best friends with Jonathan, right? They, they shared the, the armor, you know what I mean? He gave him his, his war armor to wear and all that stuff like that. So David ended up taking care, you know, of Jonathan's family, including Afghanistan. Now, Jonathan's king, Saul's son, right? So Jonathan and Jeremiah would be brothers. Huh? <laughs> so Jeremiah's brother, you know what I'm saying, is Jonathan, who was very close with Khan David. So Jeremiah's son would be, or Afghanistan would be Jonathan's nephew. And so, of course, King David is raising Jonathan's bonds, right? Jonathan's nephew, whoever, in his court, even during King Solomon's reign. And then things got shaky after that, right? That's when the kingdom is divided and all these, you know, idols, different things is happening, they're saying. So let's go back. Let's go back because, well, let's go forward. To call your ass that he has met a tribe in the Khyber Pass region. We're going to talk Khyber today, right? We like talking Khyber. You know, Khyber is also cyber because that K, KH and all that is all interchangeable. You could take the K off and it's hyper. Like some one of my noggins said in the Discord, hey, get the Discord because it's going way up with the information. It's dropping on a daily, get in the Discord, man. Uh, Kyber is also Hyber or Hyboria. <laughs> Hyboria, right? Remember the Hyboria map? Or Hyperbore, Hyperborea, you know, the 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 land, the, the ancient mystical land, Hyperborea, all that connected with the North Pole flow. All this is Hyber is Eber, Heber, what? Man, Monogus, Monogus. Y'all remember this? Uh, yeah. This book right here is called The Open Secret of India, Israel, Mexico, from Genesis to Revelation. By G. Matlock, just belly flopping. What? <sighs> Goes deep. Now, there's a few of these books, you know, kind of written from the India perspective, saying that India colonized America and everything, all the American, um, you know, say technology, power, everything is coming from this India. We know we're in India. Huh? We know it. They they either don't know, don't share, <laughs> or don't care about what's going on in the hood, man. Because according to Gastaldi 1548 map, this is India Superior. Is the picture getting clearer? This is India Superior. So when they talk India, we still talking America, man. Don't let them gas you across the Atlantic, my All right? So just remember, you in India, according to Gestalt 1548. You also in India, according to the British Museum. Because the British Museum showing this connection between Marco Polo's Asia and the new land circa 1530. In the British Museum... There ain't no North America. <laughs> it's just Prester John in India, Superior, in Cathay, in Mexico. There is no North America. But I was letting you know that this is the old world. They just labeled it North America recently. 
That's like saying I live in New Mexico. <laughs> they just called it New Mexico, man. Where are you? Are you in Covera? Cities of gold, Cibola, Calais, Are you in the promised land? Are you in the land of the Prester child? Which is stationed within India Superior. All right, that's why the Portuguese stopped looking in 1645, because when they found America, they found the land of Prester John. And who's these Nagas they found and put in captivity? The same Shikwamaga fighting these Shikwamaga wars. <laughs> 1776 all the way, you know, down there to 1800, and it kept going, right, with more... Cherokee Indian Wars, Texas Indian War, all these Nagas fighting the hijack. The Kumse, Dragon Canoe. These are the same Nagas, man. You know, that Esteban's rolling up on in Howard Cool, New Mexico. Before he gets put down for trying to hijack the women and hijack the turquoise. We in India Superior. What does it mean to you? If you're in the greater anything, you're in the home base. I was watching that uh, Man in the High Castle on Amazon. And that's like an alternative uh, timeline, you know. Of what if we, not we, but what if the hijack lost World War II or whatever the case is. And, and, and the Germans won and all that. We know this is all indigenous wars. We know that their World War II is all still about slaying niggas, man. That's why the Germans aren't swarthy anymore. Because they used to be swarthy. The Spaniards used to be swarthy. What happened? The Italians, the French used to be swarthy. What happened? The Nagas all throughout America, all throughout Central America used to be swarthy. What happened? If you go back in any of these islands... Guatemala, uh, Panama, wherever you're going to go, Cuba, you go to the indigenous, most indigenous Nagas right there, they still going to be swarthy, man. So how did the image change? What happened to India Superior? You know, the man in the high castle, they had an area called Greater Nazi, yada, yada, the Greater, and this was their headquarters. I said Greater just like Greater Tartaria, we can see in the maps that says you know, over America's Greater Tartaria and Asia Major and India Superior. This must have been the home base. And who's holding it up? The Preston. Oh, who, oh, who was Preston Chuck? <laughs> who got the book? Who got the code? Who, oh, who is Preston Chuck? Who got the scepter? Who got the book? <laughs> Who got the look? Where is this Naga found? The British Museum got this Naga right here in America, Jack. So that all the stuff we're reading about them searching in Africa, Ethiopia, Asia. This is Asia. We got the maps that say this is Asia Major. Get the drop. This is all that. This is all that. Yeah, I'm talking Capernaum, Capernaum, Guevara. What does it mean? Because they brought up Kyber. I didn't bring up Kyber. I didn't do this. They brought up Kyber. To call your ass that he has met a tribe in the Kyber Pass region of Afghan. But if Afghan is Benjamin, <laughs> Then where's the lost tribes of Israel for real? Over in the Middle East or in India? Superior. Superior. Cathay, China. Presser John, Fall Genghis Khan, and Tangu, my not? According to Swords of the East, but I'm not making this up. It's Preston 139. They say Cairo. I say, really?
Kyber like cyber, like the Kyber crystal with the Jedi lightsaber, man. The Kyber the, is the cop. So from an indigenous perspective, let's read this. When did the Americans stop, American Indians stop coming to America? Well, we know that we're in India Superior, but let's go. Edward Pakok state in his book, stated in his book, India and Greece, the Khyber, its region is wealthy. Now, just to skip ahead and go back, I'm just going to say it like this. The Khyber, <laughs> let's go here. I'm going to find immense deposits of metal ores in the region, especially of copper and gold. Now, look at all the spellings and breakdowns of Khyber, according to Gene Matlock. The same Khyber Afghan is called Kiver. Got the B's and the V's. One letter rule. Horace Butler told us this, right? Hebrew Eber. Heber is Khyber. The Hebrew Heber is Khyber, my night. My cousin, shout out Big Dre out here. Um, um, his last name is uh, Cooper. And I was just, you know, rapping with him about it, man. I was like, the Cooper is the copper. But see, I didn't really connect the copper with the Kyber and the, and the Eber. So now I got to go back to him. I was just saying the copper connection. But the copper is the Eber, man. <laughs> copper. <laughs> the copper is the Kyber. Yeah. Because we're talking about we derived our word copper from the name Kuvera, Kiver. And this is the same as we got at the top. Kivera. On the map. We're still just talking America, though. Right? India Superior. Follow me now. Rock with a con con. So. <laughs> We're in India Superior. That's where they found us. Let's put our story together, right? All right. We're in India Superior. That's where they found us. Right? That's, that's what it said. That's, that's what they are. They telling on themselves. I ain't got to do no work in 139. I ain't got to do no work in 139. I can sit back, enjoy the wave. Surf the wave. Keep the water flowing. Keep the fire burning. Let me know if there's a black screen because these hijacks <laughs> might try to dim our light. But it's all right. Just listen to me. If this is a black screen, just listen to it. Con. Close your eyes. Enjoy the way. A Native of American originally applied to the Aboriginal, the original, or copper color races. The copper is the Kyber, is the Hebrew. They're telling on themselves because the copper is the Hebrew found here, boss. They didn't bring you over here on boats, you copper naga. You original cons were just found here. You're the American C's and K's interchangeable. You're the Amari, the Amaru, Dragon Con, Copper Con, found here. Con. They tell it on themselves. They found you in India Superior. Okay. The word copper. The word copper. Right, it's derived from this Kuvera, this Kivera. And you look at the spellings, Afghan, Khyber, Kiver, Hebrew, Heber, pronounced Kiber. 
Egyptian Kipri, Greek Kefera, Ki Bieri. I'm about to say Cypriotic, Kip, Kip, <laughs> Cypriotic, uh, Kipri, Kepri, Biblical Capernaum, Capernaum. Shout out to Colin Kaepernick, man. <laughs> Arabic Kabar, right? Remember these because we're going to come back to it. Kabar. Arizona got the O Odam Babo Corvera. And I drove right through it, going driving into uh, New Mexico, man. So, Baba Corveri, Kiveri. Kiburi, Arizona, same thing as Kiveri. Texas and Mexican, Coa Hoelia, Hoela, Coa Hoelia. All the same derivations. California, Cahuila, Cahuila. Look how close the Texas is with the California. Cahuili, same damn thing. <laughs> hey, Cali Street, Texas, hard, man. I told Texas not to stand up, man. My Mexican not to stand up. New Mexico, Grand Quaveri. And that's spelled exactly the way it's spelled on the map over America, right? New Mexico, right? Yeah. Ka. 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 Fifteen. Right? <laughs> He's trying to make it something up? He's trying to make it something up. Okay, we surfing away. Okay, let's go. Say, say, drop. Leave a comment. Say, drop. You ain't over dropping. Keep the water flowing. Let's go. Look how they spelling Quaveri. Quaveri, yeah, right. Quaveri, Quaveri, Sonora. Kabuka, uh, Canadian, Quebec, it just keeps going. Irish, Ebernia, Cuba, Australian, Cobar, or Cuba itself <laughs> is Quebec. Australian, Cobar, Michigan, Kawina, Kawina is still Quebec. All this is copper, Managa. All of this refers to the copper cons, man. Not just the billions of tons of copper they took, but the Nagas found here, found here, that it owned, based on birthright from Hawa, the creator, this copper stash that they still in, right? Wow. Yeah, unknown foreigners were mining for copper in Kiwina, Michigan, right? Shout out to my Michigan, I guess. Meshi is Mishi. Meshi is Moshe. So you're talking about the cons of Moses, man. Copper cons of Moses, man. Kewina. They mine how much? It's estimated they took about 1.5 billion, billion tons of copper. Kawini copper has been found as far south as Brazil and other parts of the world. Copper color cons, <laughs> the conductive cons, copper color conductors. So we we can see clearly that Kiveta is the Hebrew, Heber, Eber.
We're going to look into this Capernaum since it's so biblical. And we know we're just talking Kivera, Kiver, Eber, Heber. Let's check out this link over here. Here we go. Hijack City. Oh no, Hijack City. Hijack always going to be a hijack, man. Let's reload this chart. I don't want to make no deal with these guys. So, you know, we're just thinking about the same type of flow. Caverna, Kiva. Eber, you know. And why they keep trying to put this in Afghan and connect this with Afghan? It has something to do with Benjamin, perhaps? Benjamin, what do you think the Afghan has to do with the Khyber, with the cop? Probably the same as the Moshe has to do with the Khyber, the cop. There we go. Shalak, y'all. We patient now. It's all good. We know it's a lot of information. Sometimes we'll be glitching out the system <laughs> when we surf in this way. So I said, why are they trying to put us in Afghan so much? And this is what they're doing here. Let's just check this out. Pick it up from here. It says about 5,000 BC or earlier, a brilliant, <laughs> a brilliant deified Phoenician Naga king. Huh? A brilliant deified Phoenician Naga king, y'all remember that? Philosopher named Kuvera. Also Kuvera, which is why Cuba connects, but we're still talking Kivera. Learn how to smelt copper, gold, and other metals. These activities took place in the kingdom named after him, Kyber, Kiveri. So Kiveri is this deified Hebrew Naga. They say Phoenician, but we know we're talking the same damn thing, right? This is a brilliant deified Hebrew Khan, Naga Khan, right? Where the word copper is even this Naga's name, right? Kuba, uh, Kubana. These activities took place in the kingdom named after him, Kyber, which is where they get the word cyber, right? <laughs> Ka, which consists of a group of craggy mountains and was now called southeastern Afghanistan. What's now called Afghanistan. Stop it. Because <laughs> Afghan is Benjamin. And the Baba Kaveda has to do with New Mexico. The Baba Kaveda past has to do with Arizona. The Baba Kaveda. Kai Burr Pass. Are we talking Arizona? New Mexico, Baba, <laughs> where the hell? It's another book by Jay Matlock. How'd I 
I spelled it Bob, Bobby, Bubba. Lawa. Only Wa can connect these dots, my life. Because we still would have been lost in the Middle East and Afghanistan. We got knockers telling us to hop on a plane. <laughs> Go make a pilgrimage in the Middle East when it's all happening right here. It's all happening right here at home. And we become strangers on our own land. The Grand Convera, Convera has everything to do with the Pueblos, my nigga. G. Matlock, yeah, got a book from Kyber, Kieber Pass, the Grand Coveta, Kieveta, New Mexico, Baba Coveta, man. So when we talk Kyber Pass, we're still talking New Mexico, according to, you know, historian researcher G. Matlock. We're still talking Mexico, we're New Mexico, we're still talking Arizona. All the same land, Mexico, Cali, all this is... Meshi. Mexico is Meshi. Mexico. Mexican. We're talking Moses. We're talking the ancient land, promised land. So I'm just telling you, man, driving through, you know, visiting Cibola in Mexico for the first time for me. You know, being in Utah multiple times. And yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, it's just beautiful, man. It's just, it's just like, you know, you can feel it. I didn't get to go into, you know, none of the, you know, old cities and all these stuff like that like I wanted to, man. But, you know, just to be there and just feel the vibration and talk to, you know, some, um, you know, Pueblo, you know, Pueblo natives, you know, around there. that They knew about the cities ago. They, <laughs> they were surprised I even brought it up. Like, how are you even thinking about this stuff, you know, <laughs> Coronado expeditions and all that stuff. Well, you better tell them, man, we coming. <laughs> this is our story. You know, we're putting it together in real time. In battle time. From Kyber, Kieber, Pass, to Gran Corveta, Kivera, Babu Coveti. That book was called When India Ruled the World. So the same type of flow that we're getting in this other book, uh, the one that we started with, we're about to go back to it. But, you know, India ruled the world. It's for us to take them extra steps and put it together and say, oh, we're still talking India superior. We're still talking America. And you just found us here. We ain't gone nowhere. You just play with our minds, you play with our mind bones for far too long. But that's all right, because we've been in a deep sleep. And, you know, they're able to put their program in, run their program. But we're in this deep sleep, you know. What? JC and my wife? Nah, man, I ain't, I ain't looking for no JC book. You all, man. What were these people all? <laughs> oh, these are just all jail. Gene uh, Hancock books. Okay. And there you go. From Kyber, Kieber, Pass, the Grand Quivetta, right? So, why they want to put us in Afghanistan with the Kyber, the Kieber, has everything to do with America? India superior. Well, we already know. But you see, there's multiple layers to this lie, man. It's like inception. You wake up on one level, you gotta keep waking up. You, you say, I'm an Israelite, all right, but you know, you're not in the new world, you're in the old world. What? It has another level, you know. You're not spinning on the ball, that's another level. <laughs> you tell somebody M H O E, they're like, Yeah, yeah, I get it. And, and they start meditating on it and they say, man, 
I've been plugging into something else. I've been plugging into another philosophy. I've been plugging into a hijack. I haven't been in Mechoe as long as I thought I have. They just tricked me into thinking I'm being most high over everything. But in reality, they're, <laughs> they're making me believe in some other figure. And if I don't believe in this other figure, I'll never know the creator. That's not MHOE. The creator didn't say, believe in this or else I don't love you. The creator said, keep the code, man. Listen to me. Hearken my commandments. So by the time we, you know, become aware that they just found us here, we have to know where here is. And they'll take something like the Kyber and put it way over there when we got the evidence that the Kyber is where it's right over here underneath our feet. We know that the Kyber is the Eber, is the Hebrew, is the copper, is the Kuvera, is the Kivera. This is happening in real time, but we're just talking about a Phoenician Naga king, right? A brilliant, deified Naga Khan. So I'm going to put you in some craggy mountains. According to Hindu mythologies, you know, <laughs> all these mythologies that they want a tailor made to, you know, fit some narrative, but what is the indigenous truth? Right? We're not interested in Hindu myth mythos. We we want truth. We want facts. What is Capernaum, right? What is Capernaum? What is Capernaum? So understand my life. That the Capri the Kapar, the Kyber. <laughs> all this connects to your homeland. All this, all this is on the map. It's right here for you. Once you put together one piece, piece starts to fit. You know what I mean? Without you having that one piece, you wouldn't see the puzzle. You wouldn't see the picture to even put the other piece there. But now you can see the pieces and there's just infinite things to dig on. There's infinite things to dig on. <laughs> All right, let's get a piece of this Benjamin to Doula and then uh, I'm going to go back into this Kyber flow, this Corvetta flow. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I want to get that blacked out part. We're going to get that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get the blacked out part from 138. You know, I don't know why they chose two hours and 30 minutes in, but at least you got 200, two hours and 30 minutes of the light. <laughs> you got some darkness, man, but we know how to navigate. Let's get it. Uh, Benjamin Tadula. Benjamin of the Dula, Sefer Masa, Old Shell, Rabbi Benjamin. Let's get it. Marcus Nadler Adler. Page 52. And just see how everything connects. That's why I just wanted to get some of that foundation, that Afghan flow. Just see how it all you know, starts to make sense. In front of one of the synagogues is the sepulcher of Daniel of blessed memory. The river Tigris divides the city and the bridge connects the two parts. On the one side where the Jews dwell is the sepulcher of Daniel. Here the marketplaces used to be containing great stores of merchandise by which the Jews became enriched. On the other side of the bridge they were poor because they had no marketplaces.
to get it bigger for you, all right? Uh, nor merchants there, only gardens and plantations. And they became jealous and said, quote, all this prosperity enjoyed by those on the other side is due to the merits of Daniel, the prophet who lies buried there. So Daniel's, you know, bones is bringing them fortune. It's crazy, right? Then the poor people asked those who dwelt on the other side to place the sepulcher of Daniel in their midst. But the others would not comply. So war prevailed between them for many days, and no one went forth or came in on account of great strife between them. At length, both parties, growing tired of this state of things, took a wise view of the matter and made a compact, namely that the coffin of Daniel should be taken for one year to one side and for another year to the other side. This they did, and both sides became rich. In the course of the time, Sinjar, Shah, Ben Shah. Now, Shah is also like a, like a czar or like a Khan. You know what I mean? It's their chief. So, who ruled over the kingdom of Persia and had 45 kings subject to his authority came to the place. Okay. He is called Sultan al Fars al Kabir in Arabic. Uh-oh, boss, wait a minute. That Kabir <laughs> sounds a lot like we were just getting with the Kyber, right? The Kyber. <laughs> you, you see it now? That's why we went there. That's why we went there. So we're still talking the title, at least, of the Ibaru, right? Kabar. Kabar, Kabir. Kabar, the Arabic Kabar. Oh, come on, boss. I'm out of here, boss. And it's the Arabic Kabar. Which is the same as the Capernaum or the Capri, the Kiber, the Kyber, the Hebrew, Heber. We derived our word copper from the name Kuvara, Kuvere, Kiver, Managa. The Bulgarian king who became India's god of gold, mining riches. Yeah, man. We, now they call him a Bulgarian king. The other one said he's a deified. Phoenician Nami. We're still talking Kabar. A deified Phoenician Naga King. Deified Phoenician Negus. Kabar. Kyber. Okay. Okay. Slow down, drop you, drop it too fast. So he got the Kabar name in Arabic, right? The mighty sovereign of Persia. And it is he who ruled from the river Samara into the city of Samarkand. My point is, all this is happening in America. This Benjamin Tadula drop is happening in America, man. Because these Kabars, <laughs> these Kavetas, is right here in America. And it is he who ruled over the river Samara into the city of Samarkand and unto the river Gozan and the cities of Media and the mountains of Chaftan. He ruled over, also ruled over Tibet and the forest whereof one finds the animals from which the musk is obtained. The extent of his empire is a journey of four months. When this great emperor, Sinjar, king of Persia, saw that they took the coffin of Daniel from one side of the river to the other, and that a great multitude of Jews, Mohammedan, towns, and many people from the country were crossing the bridge, he asked the meaning of this proceeding. And they told him these things. He said, it is not, it is not meet to do this ignominy, 
ignominy unto Daniel the prophet, but I command you to measure the bridge from both sides and to take the coffin of Daniel and place it inside another coffin of crystal so that the wooden coffin be within that of crystal. Wow. Crystal James, what he do, man? CJ Battle. He'll take the wheel. You know what I mean? So they want the wooden coffin inside the crystal coffin. And to suspend this from the middle of the bridge by a chain of iron at this spot. You must build a synagogue for all comers so that whoever wishes to pray there, be it Jew or Gentile, may do so. And to this very day, the coffin is suspended from the bridge. And the king commanded that out of respect for Daniel, no fisherman should catch fish within a mile above or a mile below. Thence it takes three days to Rudbar, where there are about 20,000 Israelites, and among them are learned and rich men, but the Jews live there under great oppression. Thence it is two days to Nahawan, where there are 4,000 Israelites. Thence it is four days to the land of Malahid. Here live a people who do not profess the Mohammedan religion. Now listen up. So they're Hebrews. They're not Mohammedans, right? They're not worshiping the God of another tribe, the prophet of another tribe. Right, my nag is today, you know, we're just connecting our spirituality and the knowledge that's given to us a lot of times is coming from like a more ish perspective or some other perspective. You know what I'm saying? And we fall into this other black hole and we're not connected to these cons that are found here in India Superior. You know, we're not connected to our Hebrew roots no more. So we're able to be swayed into, you know, Their philosophy, Managa, that leads us into another loop. These religions, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just keeping our code, being Israelites, we now got to be Mohammedan Israelites, Christian Israelites, Buddhist Israelites. We got to be everything but the tribes of Israel, right? Asherah. So, but these people don't profess the Mohammedan religions, but live on high mountains right? and worship the old man of the land of the Hashishim, 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 all right? And among them are there, there are four communities of Israel who go with them in wartime. So I don't know what old man of the land they're referring to. Let's just keep reading. Sometimes when they say, you know, these people just might, uh, you know, honor this person or look up to this person. Just like they say, uh, Kitsukwada was worshipped, or was he revered, was he honored, you know, as a priest cop, you know what I'm saying? These are all translations, but let's get it. And among them are four communities of Israel who go forth with them in wartime. So they they ready for battle time, these communities. They are not under the rule of the king of Persia, but reside in the high mountains and descend from these mountains to pillage and to capture booty. Or, you know, uh, spoils of war, you know what I mean? And then return to the mountains, and none can overcome them. They are learned men among the Jews. There are learned men among the Jews of their land. Learned men among the Jews. So these Israelites come out the mountains, you know what I mean, for war, get what they got to get, <laughs> and go back to their land. They are learned, right? So they're not some dummies, they're not some savages. These Jews are under the authority of the head of the captivity in Babylon. Whoa. So these are wartime like like Davidic cons, you know. So it has kind of like an exilarch type of flow to it, you know what I'm saying?
under the authority of the head of the captivity in Babylon. That Babylon just rings a bell. What does it make you think of? Babylon. Babel. You know, they say Bible comes from Babel. <laughs> All these terms, man. We we talking to Axelar. Son of the Preston. Now, I'm not saying they're saying this particular Axelar, but they are saying the head, the one with the authority. No, they they got Daniel's body. I don't know where you would put the book of Daniel, but I would put it more recent than they put it. So this Axelar has to be existing after, you know, the life of Daniel. Now this particular Axelar is estimated around thirteen hundred. Son of Raja Hir, Raja Chola, Jadaran, Emperor of Soli, Prester John. And we're talking about the Axelar, Davidic Axelar of Sauslin, which means medicine. Look, just like dragon means, you know, the one with the deadly glands, right? <laughs> so this menacing dragon of Babylon and Georgia, right? We got a Georgia. We got Georgia right here. A lot of the Cherokee flow comes right out of Georgia, right? I got family from Georgia. You got family from Georgia too. And Babylon is just really a generic term for this captivity. Now we say in Persian captivity. It's just a connection, you know, we've been drawn between this Genghis Khan invasion and this Persian flow, you know. This Nebuchadnezzar, Solomon Astor flow, you know, with this Prester John, you know, Genghis Khan, so-called Khan flow. Did he kidnap Daniel, King David's son? And if Genghis Khan, Nebuchadnezzar, kidnapped Daniel, David's son, then this, you know, David here, who is the son of a David the First or Prester John, would be like a brother to Daniel, you know. Which would make sense why they go on a war for it, you know. I'm just thinking about this Babylon thing. Just surfing away. When they say Babylon, we can connect it to a David. We can connect it to a Prester John. Chola. Last time we got the Chola is Soli. Soli is Chola. Soli like Salima. The Chola title is like the Sali or Soli Sol Solomon title. These Jews are under the authority of the head of captivity in Babylon. Thence it is a five days, it is five days to Ahmadiyya, where there are about 25,000 Nagas <laughs> Israelites. This is the first of those communities that dwell in the mountains of Kaftan, Kaftan, where there are more than a hundred Jewish communities or Hebrew communities. God. Here is the commencement of the land of Medea. These Jews belong to the first captivity which King didn't we just say Shalom and Azar? 
What's that got to do with Nebuchadnezzar? What's it got to do with Genghis Khan? Fled or led away, and they speak the language in which the Targum is written. Ooh, that Targum script, right? Targum translation. Among them are learned men. The communities reach from the province of Am Am Amadi unto the province of Galan. 25 days distant on the border of the kingdom of Persia. They are under they are under the authority of the king of Persia. And he raises a tribute from them through the hands of his officer. And the tribute which they pay every year by way of poll tax is one gold amir, which is equivalent to one and one third Maravedi. This tax has to be paid by all males in the land of Islam who are over the age of 15 at this place Amadia there arose this day 10 years ago a man named David Al Roy of the city of Amada come on man come on boss we just brought up the David of Babylon flow right <coughs> Lot popping on me some water. Mm, 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 mm. It's falling right into our hands. It's falling into our hands. Let's press the John 139. This is why you need to get all this <laughs> on the pack on the flash drive because. Long after all these links are taken off the internet, you at least got the drop. You see it clear, man. So, you know, hit the description and make it happen, man. Because this is for this is for everything that we're doing. This this is not going to be repeated. And this is what we're doing, right? Drop Nation. Press the one thirty nine. Let's go. He stood. Okay, back it up. There arose this day ten years ago a man named David Alroy. Now look how they play with that name right david alroy is david l roy <laughs> roy is in king right or l ray right <laughs> r e y l ray right so this is david king of the city of Ahmadiyya. now what's this name for real you know this is for us to investigate, but we know we're talking America, my night. So keep that in mind. He studied under his die, the head of the captivity, and under the head of the academy, academy, John G A O N, John Jacob, in the city of Baghdad, <laughs> and he was well versed in the law of Israel, in the halakha as well as in the Tammud and in all the wisdom of the Mohammedans, also in secular literature. So he had the Mohammedan drop, the law of Israel drop, the Halakha, the Tabu. Studied under his die, head of cap. Well, he's another exilarch if he's head of the captivity, his die. That's another exilarch. And under the head of the Academy John Jacob David Elroy also in the secular literature and in the writings of the magicians man so he's a magi this David Elroy <laughs> Uh -huh. He conceived the idea of rebelling against the king of Persia and collecting the Jews who live in the mountains of Kafkan to go forth and to fight against all the nations and to march and capture Jerusalem. So he wants to get his land back. He's an Aganaki, you know what I'm saying? He showed signs by pretended miracles to the Jews. Now who says they're pretending? Only the haters. Only the hater would say that. He, you ain't interviewing him. You're saying, oh, they were just pretending miracles. Same thing they say about President John. Oh, uh, you know, he didn't really have 
all this land and all this wealth. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't really do that. You know, all this was pretended stuff. All this was made up. The Preston John letter, the this, the, the, all made up, right? Then why is there so much proof, evidence? Why are we on 139? You don't see me over here playing? How many docks have we pulled up so far? Why do they keep taking them off the internet? Why don't they teach about this in school? <laughs> and who were the Portuguese searching for for 500 years? Portuguese monument, a place right at the tip of South Africa, because that's where they were shipping off, you know, and going into Ethiopia over here, over there. They're trying to figure it out. They're looking, but what man do you search for for 500 years, boss? Or <laughs> Templar up is 1145, 1645. <laughs> high, high strangeness, high strangeness. I mean, this ain't no play play. Something's real about this priest king of the Hebrews you're searching for to help you with these crusades against the Mohammedans, but really you're working with the Mohammedans to capture the Hebrews. Yeah, Psalms 83, right? The Confederacy. But if you don't know your tribe, you don't even know who's against you. You just think you're black and white people are coming for you. White people are coming for me. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Niggas is coming for you, man. Black people are coming for you. This is your own peoples. But you're talking about Moab and them. You're talking about... Esau in there, right? You're talking about Amon in there, the Jebusites, the Amalekites, the Canaanites. Psalms 83, read it. They're coming after the treasure and the treasured one. So here comes this David, El Roy, or David the King, who rallies these nines like the Kumse to march and capture Jerusalem. He showed signs by miracles, just like who? Hmm. We got before the David was walking on water. Go get that drop. <laughs> they got a lot from Dot Dot We. And and what what did uh, Jeremiah say? I mean, what qualified Jeremiah to speak on the cop? Is it because Jeremiah is the son? Of King Saul. And his son Afghan was raised in the courts of David so he could speak on a car, he could speak on Dawi. The words that came to Jeremiah from Hawa directly. Thus spoke Hawa directly. The power of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words I have spoken unto you in the book. For lo, the day comes, says Hawa that I will turn the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, says Hawah, and I will cause them to return to the land. That's why it's important to know where's the land. And why would they tell you where it is? Why wouldn't they flip your map upside down? Why wouldn't they flip you upside down? I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. And these are the words that I that Hawa spoke concerning Asherah and Hawahuda. But thus says Hawa, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask you now and see whether a man does travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man 
with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it, and it is a time of trouble unto Jacob. But out of it shall he be saved, and it shall come to pass in that day, says a wild host, that I will break, I will break, I will break his yoke from off your neck. There ain't no other savior but Hawah. I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bands. Your chains, my naga. Strangers will no longer make you their slaves, their bondmen. Verse 9, but they shall serve a wah. That means you are keeping the code. KTC. And David, their king, whom I will raise up unto them. How dare you, Jeremiah? How dare you say, David? Is being raised up like like Jesus. <laughs> no, JC's coming back. Whom I will raise up. David. Just like he's walking on water. Just like he got the magi flow and the miracles, right? And is that why they call Jesus son of David? Because they're biting his staff. I thought he was an immaculate conception, boss. I thought he didn't have no daddy. I thought the creator was his daddy. How can he be son of David, man? He's not from the loins of David. Because the prophecy is with Dawi. The covenant is with Dawi, Psalms 89. And the scepter will never depart from Judah. So we know we're talking Dawi, which is why they got to call Jesus son of David. And hijack the bloodline. Because that's what they do. That's what a hijack do. We're talking David. Whom I will raise up unto them. This is what Jeremiah is talking. Because Jeremiah is in the house. He's the brother of Jonathan. Let's keep reading. Do not be dismayed, O Israel. Yeah, so David is rising up over here, boss. What are we on an alternative timeline or something? Dawi's rising up over here, boss. Same way Dawi was fighting for you over there, boss. Same way he's going to be raised up again over there, boss. He showed signs by miracles to the Hebrews. And said, the Holy One, blessed be he, sent me to capture Jerusalem and to free you from the yoke of Gentiles. Why? Sound like some Jesus talk, right? <laughs> and the Jews believed in him and called him their Messiah. I'm out of here, boss. Messiah is a messenger. He came with a message. Hamashiach. The Hebrews believed in him, called him Hamashiach. When the king of Persia heard of it, he sent for him to come and to speak with him. El Roy, Al Roy. You know, in the Hebrew is the Al or El, right? We're, we're talking about <laughs> Hawa, the Al, the strong power, the Ray the king so it's like the king sent by the strong power man went to him without fear and when he had audience of the king the latter asked him art thou the king of i'm out of here i'm this is too similar but i'm reading benjamin of Tadula about david elroy and they're asking him they're asking is he the king of the jews then they write on jesus thing king of the jews come on man they biting our staff it's still in a story from the middle or the, the dark ages, from the 1200s, from the 1300s. These are the dark ages for a reason, man. And they called us darkies. And they stole our style. They stole our castles, our kingdoms, our land, our gold, our copper. 
They stole our books, our laws. <laughs> they stole your titles. They stole your identity. And they gave you phantoms and duplications. And now they're calling this jabroni king of the Jews. When they asked King David the same thing. He answered, I am. <laughs> then the king was wrath and commanded that he should be seized and placed in the prison of the king, the palace or the place, Shalak, the place where the king's prisoners were bound until the day of their death. So he was sentenced to death. See how this flows with the JC? Watch, because he, JC was put to death, right? King David was sentenced to death. That's like being put to death. <laughs> and then what happens in the city of Tabaristan, Tabar, which is on the large river of Gozan. At the end of three days, while the king was sitting, deliberating with his princes concerning the Jews who had rebelled, David suddenly stood before them. What? He just popped up, boss. I thought he was sentenced to death. They placed, they seized him and placed him in the prison of the king where the king's prisoners were bound until the day of their death. And here we go. After three days, just like Jesus was raised in three days, <laughs> say it with me, cause phantoms are duplications. Yosef, take the wheel. Yosef did in immense enormous detail drop live in the ether man at 432 the drop radio look out for the continuation of the fifth wave they can't stop the water hey man that's the that's the uh you know that's the motivation right there they can't stop the water man because we back you know what i mean <laughs> the water for your patience we back so look Look out for the eat the squad dropping in books on you again. Tune in June fourteenth. That's a Shabbat, and uh, let's just keep the water flowing, man. <laughs> Shalom, Alawa. So, just like JC, David was crucified, <laughs> sentenced to death, and in, in three days he rises from the dead. At the end of three days, while the king stood deliberating with his princes concerning the Jews who had rebelled, David suddenly stood before them. He had escaped from the prison without the knowledge of any man. And when the king saw him, he said to him, Who brought thee hither, and who has released thee? What? How you, how you just popping up in my face bone like this? This is disrespectful. <laughs> David said, my own wisdom and skill, big mama, my wisdom. Answered the other, for I am not afraid of thee, nor of any of your servants. The king forthwith loudly bade his servants to seize him, but they answered, we cannot see any man. Remember, he studied <laughs> the magi-ness, right? Learn from the magicians, they say. <laughs> this naga just went invisible. This naga just went stealth on the ass, right? He, he disappeared. I never saw JC disappear. I'm just saying, I never seen or heard of JC disappear in the New Testament. I heard him walk on water, but I never heard him disappear. But also, I also heard King David could walk on water too, boss. We cannot see any man, although our ears hear him. Then the king and all his princes marveled at his sub subtlety. But he asked, excuse me, but he said to the, the king, I will go my way. <laughs> so he went forth. So all they could do is hear this dude. And the king went after him, and the princes and servants followed their king until they came to the riverside. Then King David, I'll roar, 
took off his mantle and spread it on the face of the water to cross their own cons. This naga walking on water. This naga walking on water. I'm out of here, balls. Can I get some frequency? Can I get some 432 hertz? Can we meditate on this? This nigga, this nigga just walk on water, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So happily, it so happily. So he took off his mantle, like some garment or something. Some, he spread it on the face of the water and crossed the water. When the servants of the king saw that he crossed the water on his mantle, they pursued him in small boats, wishing to bring him back, but they were unable. And they said, quote, there is no wizard like this in the whole world. What the, what is going on with this David? I, he just walked on water, boss. I've never seen no wizard do that. We never saw, you know, uh, you know, none of these, you know, Persian, you know, magicians do this before, boss. But we're going to write that J.C. did it because we want him to be like David. Yeah, we're going to write that he raised up in three days from death, right? And walked on water. <laughs> Just like David. I want to be, I want to be like David. That's what they say. Hijack City. Say it with me, Nagas. Phantoms of duplication. There is no wizard like this in the whole world. There is no magi like this. Same thing he said about Moses, right? Hmm. That's, that self same day he went on a journey of 10 days to the city of Ahmadiyya by the strength of the ineffable name. Wow. And he told these Hebrews, the Jews, all that had befallen him, and they were astonished at his wisdom. Let's keep reading. After that, the king of Persia sent word to Emir al Mamuni, the caliph of the Mohammedans at Baghdad, urging him to warn the head of the exile and the head of the academy, academy John Jacob, to restrain David Elroy from executing his designs and he threatened that he would otherwise slay all the Jews in his empire. <laughs> Damn. He said, if you don't get a hold of this super wizard Magi David, if you don't get a hold of this this king, Al Roy, king of the Hebrews, Axelard, if you don't get a hold of this Exile, head of the exile, this exile arc, David, Babylon, <laughs> son of the Prester John himself. So, of course, he got the drop on the Magi flow. <laughs> yeah, I'm just putting the timeline together because, you know. It would seem that that David Salston is the one that went head up with Genghis Khan when he went to war with the press during 11, or excuse me, 1202. They're putting the timeline around the same thing, 1195 for the press to, uh, David, they put, you know, before 1300. So it's right in Genghis Khan time period, which would also be called Nebuchadnezzar, which means Nebo, defend my boundary. So when we talk Nebu, we're talking Nebo, Khan. Uh, have you heard of Mount Nebo in Moab? Have you heard of Mount Nebo in Moab, Utah, Utah? Have you heard that Utah is Utah, 
Judah. Now factor in the Bible Cavada, Arizona, uh, you know, New Mexico, flow, Cibola, you know, Hawaku. Presto John, right? <laughs> I can't make this up. Can't make it up. So he said, give up this Naga David or I'm going to slay all Hebrews in Persia, period. <laughs> then all the congregations of the land of Persia were in great trouble. And the head of the captivity and the head of the academy, <laughs> academy, John, Jacob, sent to El Roy saying the time of redemption is not yet arrived. We have not yet seen the signs thereof. For by strength shall no man prevail. Now our mandate is that thou cease from these designs, or thou shalt surely be excommunicated. Whoa. So they turn on David. That, that seemed to have happened before. Didn't they turn on David? After, you know, they said David slayed a man and they, David's son started fighting for the throne. Y'all remember that? So, who are these people that are suddenly against the Khan, right? They wanted to be excommunicated from all Israel. That sound familiar? And they sent unto Zakai the Nasi in the land of a sore Mosul and wrote unto Rabbi Joseph Barkhan al Muk, the astronomer there, bidding them to send on the letter to Al Roy, and furthermore they themselves wrote to him to warn him, but he would not accept the warning. Then there arose a king of the name San Niddin, San Niddin, the king of Togar Mim and a vassal of the king of Persia who sent to the father-in-law of David, Al Roy, and gave him a bribe of 10,000 gold pieces to slay Al Roy in secret. So he went to Al Roy's house and slew him while he was asleep on his bed. So according to them, this David was slain by his father-in-law. <laughs> I'm just playing around with some stuff here, man. I don't know, man. But... Father-in-law would be His wife's father. Just could be something, could be nothing, you know. Now, does it tell us on this one who his wife is? Does it say just father, son? about this one you gotta look the same person that shows up in different titles you know you gotta find all the duplicates and figure it out because that same David is this same David it's the same time period right here he's called King Consort because he's married now it shows now we've got now we got his wife right tomorrow Woo! Okay, I'm just I'm just playing around on my me. Could be something. Could be nothing. It's press the 139. Why wouldn't I, you know, surf the wave just a just a tad bit. Alright, so rock with a noggin, you know, follow a car. They say you will slay in bed. 
by his father-in-law or his father-in-law, you know, made it happen, you know, however it went. We're just searching the Davids and the Babylons and the, you know, Axolarchs. So the David in question, which would be the son of the Preston, right? Which, according to the Genghis Khan flow, they say that David was killed. Some say by the naming, some say friendly fire. Again, it could be the same, maybe not, but I'm just looking into it. And we're thinking Prester, but really, you know, we could be just talking about Prester's son, you know, uh, who was married to Queen Tamar. And for a while, she was queen of queens, you know what I'm saying? She was holding up the empire, you know, after her previous arranged marriage. She was arranged to Yuri. Now, in the Bible, you got this David and this Uriah situation where he's a mighty man of David that was sent to the front line. And they said David slayed a man. But in this story, Prince Yuri here ain't so... Ain't so uh, perfect, you know what I'm saying? He over there trying to hijack the whole kingdom and pretty much make like a military coup happen. So David has to come help, you know, Tamar slays Yuri, slays Prince, Prince Yuri, you know what I'm saying? So in the Bible, you got David slaying Uriah by putting him in a front line story. In this, uh, <laughs> in this timeline here, <laughs> You got David and Yuri, but Yuri's over here trying to hijack the kingdom, and David comes to the rescue of Queen Tamar. Now, David and Tamar been, you know, liking each other. Like, they've been close from very young. They come out the same, you know, type of house. You know, the Oseti is the island. It's the same royal Israel flow. Uh, Yuri is also out the house. You know, that's why they arranged it. But David was always closer with Tamar, and once... Once Yuri was out the way, that's when they got close, and that's when they called him the king consort because she was already pretty much like, you know, the head naga in charge, man. Shout out Queen Tamar. So was David slain in, in his sleep by the father-in-law, which would make him Tamar's dad? Now, who's Tamar's dad? She's the daughter of Georgie the Third. King of George. Bye, body back. Ping, pow. And Burdukan of Osadia. Burdukan. Husband of Burdukan. Alright. So. Could be a hard hit, could be something, could be nothing. But now we're back to talking to Bragantoni, Bragantioni dynasties in the House of Georgia. And that's where you got David Slauson of Babylon and Georgia flow. And you got these kings of Georgia, just like Tamar's pops will be a king of Georgia. Now, would he accept that bride to slay his son in law, David, is the question. So that's what we're reading over here. Now that we've done some homework we've done our homework right on a possible hit because we get we're putting Humpty Dumpty back together again <laughs> we're putting the story back together again in real time right king of Persia all right get it from here then there arose a king of the name Sinedin Sinedin the king of Togar Mim, and a vassal of the king of Persia, who sent to the father-in-law of David El Roy, and gave him a bribe of 10,000 gold pieces. Dang, that's a lot of gold. That's a lot of gold in pieces to slay El Roy. So he went to Elroy's house and slew him while he was asleep. So he personally did it. I, 
I don't want to bear no false witness. I, I just, I'm just saying this would be the father-in-law of that particular David. But it could be something, could be nothing. Let's go. <laughs> now you go point the finger at King George if he's innocent. I don't know. <laughs> Let's keep reading. It's getting good. So he slayed him while he was asleep. Thus were his plans frustrated. Then the king of Persia went forth against the Jews that lived in the mountain, and they sent to the head of the captivity to come to their assistance and to appease the king. He was eventually appeased by a gift of a hundred talents of gold, which they gave him. And the land was at peace thereafter. Whoa. So they slayed Dawi. Then they was about to go forth against all the Jews in the mountain. And, and they asked the, the Axelar. You know, there's different Axelars to different factions sometimes. You know what I mean? To come to their assistance and appease the king now. I know they had mentioned Daniel earlier. I mean, Daniel would also be an example of an exilarch who was raised up by Nebuchadnezzar as the top naga, right? Basically, the top naga of the Hebrews, but they had their own beef. Israel did. If, who's the exilarch? They said, Nebuchadnezzar can't choose our leader. That's like George Bush choosing the leader of the black people, <laughs> you know? The hijack can't choose the leader of our tribe. So for them to raise up Daniel, you know, was suspect to other tribe that wasn't in captivity or, you know, not in captivity. They all were in some form of it, but they weren't uh, kidnapped in the house of Nebuchadnezzar, per se. But they were on the outs and they had their own leaders. They had their own exilarchs. So there's different versions of these exilarchs sometimes. They sent to the head of captivity to come to their assistance to appease the king. He was eventually appeased by a gift of a hundred talents. And he chilled out, I guess, since he got his man, since he got David. That's crazy. Just, you know, digging on the fine print. The name of the pseudo Messiah is given as Menahem, surname Al Ruhi, but Monk satisfactorily proves that he is identical with David. Menahem, being a young man of engaging appearance and great accomplishments, he gained considerable influence with the governor of Ahmadiyya and had a considerable following among the Jews of Persia. With the intention of occupying the castle, he introduced a number of his armed adherents into the town who were careful, however, to conceal their weapons. The governor detected the conspiracy and put Alroy to death. Hmm, now it says the governor put him to death. The excitement among the Jews lasted for a considerable time. Two impostors with letters purported to emanate from Alroy came to Baghdad and worked upon the credulity of the community. Men and women parted with their money and jewelry, having been brought to believe that on a certain night they would be able to fly on angel wings or dragons <laughs> from the roofs of their houses to Jerusalem. The only thing which made the women feel unhappy was the fear that their little ones might not be able to keep pace with them in the aerial Flight, my night. This is why. This is why you gotta read the fight. What are they talking about? Hopping on the backs of angels, or are we talking dragon flight? What? They didn't know if their little ones gonna be able to keep pace with them in the aerial flight at daybreak. The fraud was discovered, but the impostors had meanwhile decamped with their treasure. All right, let's go from this mountain. It is a journey of twenty days to Hamadan, which is the great city of Media where there are 30,000 Israelites in front of a certain synagogue. There are buried Mordecai and Esther. Remember them from, you know what I'm saying, the, uh, uh, I'm about to say the, uh, uh, 
Apocrypha, you know what I'm saying? All these stories of Mordecai, right? The Maccabees, yeah, I'm tripping. <laughs> but that's in the Apocrypha, right? So the Maccabees, which, you know, takes on a lot of these Greek situation, Greek captivity situation. All right. Belly flop at this part right here. And it's just crazy how they knew exactly how many Israelites were in certain places. This belly flop, man. It says, Thence it is five days to Samarkand, which is the great city on the confines of Persia. In it lives some 50,000 Israelites. Obadiah the Nazi is their appointed head. Among them are wise and very rich men. Thence it is four days' journey to Tibet, the country in whose forest the musk is found. Thence it takes 28 days to the mountain of Nasabor. By the river goes on so this goes on river plays heavy and there are men of israel in the land of persia who say that in the mountains of nasabor four of the tribes of israel <coughs> shall of israel dwell so four of the tribes of israel are in this uh mountain nasabor nasabor okay <coughs> namely the tribe of dan the tribe of zebulon the tribe of Asher and the tribe of Naphtali. Now, <coughs> Shalom. All right, so just keeping it uh, connected with this Arizona flow, Baba Kavana flow. Grand Hancock connected the Zuni tribe with Zebulon. So the Zuni Cibola, Cibola complex right there, Hawaku, New Mexico. He connects with the tribe of Zebulon. So all we got to do really is just <laughs> find this Nasabor, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> in America type of thing. I mean, just, this is why we on Preston 139. So just keep that in mind. Let me know. Y'all recon this nice boy. Let me know if you see any hard hit. But India superior, but let's go. The tribe of Adam, the tribe of Naphtali, who were included in the first captivity of Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, which could be the Genghis Khan flow. As it is written in Second Kings, he is put, and he put them in Hala, and in Habor, right? Habor, right? They wanted to take it to the Middle East, but we keep taking it right back to Heber, Kiber. <laughs> they can't go nowhere, my night. Habor, H A B O R. Habor. It's the same as the Kabar. It's the same as the Heber. It's Habar. Habar. Dodge the vowels. Is the Kabar. So the same Habar. It's the same Quaveri. It's the same Grand Quaveri. My nugget. This is what keeps us right here at home. We're still talking North America. Quaveri. When we talk Kabar. And Eber and Habar, Habar, or Hebrew, the land of the Hebrews. We're talking Israel, right? Jerusalem, 
they talking it, but they trying to bring it to the Middle East, to Afghan, till we realize Afghan is Benjamin, and we're right back at home. We're right back at home. In Quiver. Whether we're talking Arizona, Texas, Mexico, California, New Mexico, Habor is still Quivera. Got him, got him. <laughs> A little f- fruit fly I'm trying to get my apple. Not cool, man. Not cool. <laughs> We still talking America, right? This is a great map. Hey, I'll just get lost in this thing. I mean, it's so much here. Obviously, we're on the Cavera right now, but what are these other little islands here that we, no one ever talks about? So detailed. Why isn't there any ice on this circle <laughs> that they want to put ice, you know? So you find out that there's an ice wall surrounding you. Then you find out that it wasn't even ice in the 1500s, 1600s. Something happened more recent to turn it into ice. Ice, ice, baby. Baby, we're still talking Covera. So this Habor is Ebor. Okay. The Habor is Quiver. Okay. So we're just reading Second Kings, man. <laughs> so we're talking biblical. We're talking Quiver. We're talking America. This is a body bag for the illusion when we talk Habor. River by the river goes on. Zion, right? Zion, Zion. And in the cities of Medes, the extent of their land is 20 days' journey, and they have cities and large villages. In the mountains, the river goes on, forms the boundary on the other side, one or on the one side. They are not under the rule of the Gentiles. But they have a prince of their own. They have an Aguilar of their own. And his name is Joseph. Amar Kala. <laughs> Amarika. Amari. Amarika. La. The Levi. There are scholars among them. And they sow and reap and go forth to war as far as the land of Cush by way of the desert. They are in league with the Kafar al Torak, my nigga. The Kafar al Torak, do you remember? The. The Torah, 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 Nagas. The Kafar. See, these Kafar al Torah. They good about it in lost tribes and promised lands, did we not? We're going to get some a foot of this mile. Who worship the wind and live in the wilderness. <laughs> hey, they don't know nothing about these people, but this is how they want to paint them. Some savages who do not eat bread nor wine but live on raw, uncooked meat. They have no noses and in lieu thereof. They have two small holes <laughs> through what come on. Sound like y'all going overboard to try to turn these people into ogres or something. But that's when we have to understand what they were really doing. See, the Kofar is where they're getting this... <laughs> Remember... <laughs> These people weren't rocking with the Mohammedans, right? You know, previously. So the Mohammedans also aren't rocking with <laughs> King David in there, right? So <laughs> it 
in Islam, you know, they got the Dajjal flow. This Dajjal flow has to do with this Kafir, Kafir, Kafar situation. Kafar, Kafar, however they spell it. I think it's like a K A F F I R. And it's like some type of slang term. Connected with this Dijon situation. I don't know if I'm spelling it right. But we did a whole two, three hour drop on this. Get the drop. This is pressed 139. It's just bits and pieces are now you know, connecting clear and clear. We don't got to go so deep. We got hours that we went deep on this stuff. But what is a kafir, my night? Right? It's simple. Let's just stay in wiki. Let's not go too deep. Let's not go too deep. So stay in Wikipedia. Kafir is an Arabic term, right? We've been digging on the Khabar Arabic flow. The Kafir is an Arabic term in Islam, which refers to a person who disbelieves the God in Islam. Not the God, the creator, but the God in Islam. That's what I'm saying. When, when Muhammad told Kish, to go put the Islam on the Israelites. He wasn't putting the same God on them. He's saying the God in Islam. The God in Islam is the God in Islam. So what what came first, the Arabic title Kafir or this tribe of the Kofar? One letter rule, dodge the vows. What came first, the Islamic God or the Hebrew creator, right? But this kafir is often translated as an infidel or a pagan or a rejecter or a denier or disbeliever, unbeliever, non believer, and a non Muslim. Ungrateful towards God. Kufri, right? Now they got this K-U-F instead of the K-A-F. Are we getting closer to the K-O-F, the Kofar? Thankless, non-believing. da 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 Is this what we're talking about when we talk Kofar? Did they just take it and spin it into some horrible thing and then create some story of these people looking... All crazy, these Kafir Kofar, Torah, Torah, all, all, which means what? Strong power, Torah, Torah Nagas, right? And they say, oh, they worship the wind and they eat raw meat and they have no noses. Come on, bro. Come on. But they got two holes to breathe out of. They eat animals, both clean and unclean. And they are very friendly towards the Israelites. Really? 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 These mutants with no 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 noses in the desert eating raw and cooked meat are friendly towards Israel. Israel don't get down with no uncooked nothing and all this. Why would they be so friendly unless you're just making all this up just to put them down? Because to you, they're unbelievers. They are kofar. To you, they are kafir. Kufri. Faithless, infidels, pagans, and deniers. Because they deny the Mohammedan God. So they are kafri. Kafri or but they're down with the Israelites, right? They're friendly towards Israel. Fifteen years ago, they overran the country of Persia with a great army and took the city of Ray. They smote it with the edge of the sword, took all the spoil thereof, and return by the way of the wilderness. 
This is why they mad at the Kofar. This is why they're calling them pagans. <laughs> they said these pagans, these Kofar, they, they put all our armies down with this edge of their sword. These Caffrey, some bad mamma jammas, and they're down with the Israelites. Not the God in Islam. Not the Mohammedans. God. Yeah, they took the whole city. That's why they're calling them pagans and savages and all this stuff. They got a, they got a gripe <laughs> against these Kofars. And they're rocking with the Israelites. They overran the whole country of the Persians with a large army. So it's a gang of them. Took the city of Ray, smote it with the edge of the sword, took all the spoil, and bounced back to the wilderness. Such an invasion had not been known in the land of Persia <laughs> for many years. When the king of Persia heard thereof, his anger was kindled against them, and he said, Not in my days, nor in the days of my fathers, did an army sally forth from this wilderness. Now I will go and cut off their name from the earth. That's what they that's what they attempted to do. And this is why they call them the Kofar, the pagans. So what are their real names? A proclamation was made throughout his empire. And he assembled all his armies and he sought a guide who might show him the way to their encampment. And a certain man said that he would show him the way as he was one of them. And the king promised that he would enrich him if he did so. And the king asked him as to what provisions they did require for the march through the wilderness. And he replied, take with you bread and wine for 15 days, for you will find no substance, by the way, till you have reached their land. And they did so and marched through the wilderness for 15 days, but they found nothing at all. And the food began to give out. So that man and beast were dying of hunger and thirst. Then the king called the guide and said to him, Where is your promise to us that you would find our adversaries? To which the other replied, I have mistaken the way. And the king was wroth and commanded that his head be struck off. And the king further gave orders throughout the camp that every man who had any food should divide it with his neighbor. And they consumed everything they had, including their beast. And after a farther 13-day march, they reached the mountain of Nasabor, where the Jews live. So they're looking for these pagans they call Kafir or Kafir. <laughs> Can't find them. They're damn near, you know, being cannibals at this point. They go 13 more days and they find the mountains where those four tribes of Hebrews are. They came there on the ship on the Sabbath day and encamped in the gardens and plantations and by the springs of water where are by the side of the river goes on. Now it was the time of the ripening of the fruit and they ate and consumed everything. Everything. The hijack came like a parasite into these people's gardens and <laughs> ate up everything. No man came forth to them but on the mountains they saw cities and many towers. Then the king commanded two of his servants to go and inquire of the people who lived in the mountains and to cross the river either in the boats or by swimming. Just checking this out. It says something, something. Fine print not always signify Ethiopia, but also denotes parts of Arabia, especially those Nearest to Abyssinia. Drum roll, please. That's why you got to read the fine print. Who or oh, who? <laughs> who or oh, who is Preston John? Why not? Some call him the Magi. The Dalai Lama, the Raja Hiraja, the Lebna Dangle. 
the Imperado, de los Abyssinios. I'll be seeing you. Abyssinios got a <laughs> rocking the fringe flow, man. Look at the look at the shoot. <laughs> He's the emperor. He's the emperor of the Abyssinios, right? Which we got before predates the Ethiopia flow. Ethiopia was once called Abyssinia, right? So this is the Khan of Ethiopia, for real, for real. So we're not just talking Ethiopia. We're talking Abyssinia, boss. I'll be seeing you, boss. Abyssinia. So this has everything to do with Presser John. Everything we're reading, man. <laughs> everything we're reading has everything to do with Abyssinia, man. The mixed multitude. The tribes, Exodus, Khan David, whom I will raise up unto you, Jeremiah 30. So the king commanded two of his servants to go and inquire of the people who live in the mountains and to cross the river either in boats or by swimming, so he searched and found a large bridge on which there were three towers, but the gate of the bridge was locked, and on the other side of the bridge was a great city. Then they shouted in front of the bridge till the man came forth and asked them what they wanted and who they were, but they did not understand him till an interpreter came who understood their language. And when he asked them, they said, We are the servants of the king of Persia, and we have come to ask who you are and whom you serve. To which the other replied, we are the Jews. We have no king and no Gentile prince, but a Jewish prince rules over us. A Hebrew Khan is what they mean in the correct interpretation. Then they question him with regards to the infidels. See, they're calling these kafir infidels what does it say in the wiki man kofir kafir <sighs> kafir is often translated as infidel man Say it with me. Ba body bag <laughs> for the illusion and delusion. Disbelievers, deniers, retractors, rejectors. <laughs> Kafir is translated as infidel. And when they brought up the Kofar, which lets us know for sure we're on the right track. The Kofar is the Kafir because we're talking to Mohammedans and we're talking to Persians. They then question him with regards to the infidels, the sons of Ghuls of the Kofar al Turai. They're the infidels, right? This is a derogatory term they're calling them. And he answered, truly, they are in league with us. So he's saying this. The Hebrews saying they're rocking with us. What about them? <laughs> and he who seeks to do harm seeks our harm. If you seek to do them harm, you seek our harm. We tribed up. It's the mixed multitude. We all rocking with Preston John. We all rocking with David. Then they went their way and told the king of Persia, who was much alarmed. And on a certain day, the Jews asked him to join combat with them. But he answered, I have not come 
to fight you, but the cold far out to rack. So the Hebrews is calling them out. Like, what you want to do, king of Persia? Is it up or is it up? Is it up or is it stuck? <laughs> he said, I ain't, I ain't got no beef with you. I'm just trying to get to the cold far. <laughs> I'm not come to fight you, but the Kofar to rock my enemy. And if you fight against me, I will be avenged on you by killing all the Jews in my empire. I know that you are stronger than I am in this place. And my army has come out of this great wilderness, starving and a thirst. Deal kindly with me and do not fight against me, but leave me to engage with the Kafar out to rock my enemy and sell me also the provisions which I require for myself and my army. So he he wants to use us against us, right? Divide and cut. The Jews then took counsel together and resolved to propitiate the king on account of the Jews who were in exile in his empire. So they let him slide because he had some of us in captivity, right? So they didn't want no bloodshed on our people. Then the king entered their land with his armies, stayed there 15 days, and they showed him much honor and also sent a dispatch to the Kofar al Tarak, their allies, reporting the matter to them. So they said, look, we'll take a man, but we're also going to warn warn these Nagas that this is what's up. You know what I mean? We're going to tell them the truth about what's happening. So they got the drop. Thereupon, the latter occupied the mountain passes in force with a large army composed of all those who dwelt in the desert. And when the king of Persia went forth to fight with them, they placed themselves in battle array against him. The Kofar al Tarak army was victorious, victorious, Manani, and slew many of the Persian hosts. This is why they mad, son. And the king of Persia fled with only a few followers to his own country. Whoop that ass, man. Yeah. Go get that Benjamin Tadula. The Kofar is the Kafir. This is who they're calling the pagans. And that's who they're calling infidels, God. Let's go. <laughs> Let go. O-H-R dot E-D-U. Oh, what they do. Great drop here, man. You know, I've just been digging on a couple things with this. It had mentioned some of this Benjamin to do. It also mentioned some Sam and Yah, man. Also talk Sam and Yah. Might have to get it from here because we're going to start getting some of this Sam and Yah. Uh, but yeah, let's see. This is the. The Lost Jews, the Ten Tribes, by Rabbi Yeramahu Ulma. Hi. Some people asking him some questions. I'm just belly flopping. He, he's trying to say where the Ten Tribes went. <laughs> the Midrash says the tribe were exalted or exiled beyond the river Samanya. So Samanya plays heavy because there's tribes that are in exile across it. Samanya in Greek means the river of Shabbat. Since all week it flows with tremendous turbulence and on the Sabbath it rests. So this, this river proves this the holy commandment of Hawa to rest so much that it actually stops flowing on the Sabbath. <clears throat> Turnus Rufus once asked Rabbi Akiva, how do you know your reckoning of the Sabbath is correct? Rabbi Akiva answered, the river Samayam proves it. A Jewish explorer of the 900s, Eldad of the tribe of Dan. And this is who we're talking about when we read the Lost Tribes and Promised Land, Eldad, the Danite flow, who's talking about the tribe of Yannis that flees from idolatry. Yohannes is John. Claimed to have seen the Samanyan. It still rolls boulders and sands without water with a great tremor 
and roar such that if it collided with a mountain of iron, it would pulverize it. This river is flowing without water, but with these boulders and these precious jewels and and somehow I got fish in it, but without water, <laughs> just read up on this thing. It's, it's magical. Some say on the Sabbath, like, it lights, it turns into fire, like you can't even cross it if you wanted to. <laughs> Such as it, it's flowing so hard that if it collided with a mountain iron, an iron mountain, it would pulverize the mountain. The river flows this way all six days of the week, rolling boulders and sand without any any water. And on the Sabbath, it rests. When the sun sets Friday evening, a cloud descends upon the river and no man is able to come near it. Until the end of the Sabbath, Eldad identified the river in Africa between Sudan and Ethiopia, while Rabbi Samuel of Zanagoli says it's in Egypt. So they don't know. What about India Superior, Paul? <laughs> Others claim it's in the east. Rabbi Manasseh ben Israel says it's near the Caspian Sea in Iran, while Rabbi Avraham Prezel says it's in the Ganges in India. Uh oh. India, what? Now we're in India. So we went from Africa, Sudan, Ethiopia, Egypt. We went to the Caspian Sea, Persia, all that. Now we're back home in India with the Ganges flow, with the Ganges flow. Asia Major, Asia Minor. India Superior, India Inferior. <laughs> what is or Orientis Fine Finis map fifteen thirty one? Can we contribute to the perspective <laughs> that we are not in a new world? Fifteen thirty-one. Now check this out. And my naughty, just remember, man. This is at least our third body pack <laughs> for the illusion. Not just the fact that, yeah, there ain't no North America, and we see Asia and Cathay and Florida and the original Paris, Paris, Paris. But to the far left in North America, you see the Ganges. We see the Ganges River. <laughs> now you tell me, what are you doing, Ganges in North America? And what river would this be today called? And didn't they just tell us? <laughs> That this situation we're talking about is connected with the Ganges in India, right? But we're in India Superior. We're in Asia Major. According to 1531, Orientis finds, man, there's a Ganges in America. <laughs> I can't make this up. Further letting us know. That we in India Superior when we talking this stuff. When we talk San Banya, they said it's in it's the Ganges River. He said it's the Ganges River. <laughs> Man, what? So we looking for the San Banya, and you telling me, you telling us. That it's been here the whole time in India Superior when we talk Ganges. We're not talking 
Asia Minor. We're talking Asia Major. Because this is a major deal. And this is why they hide the fact that you are in Asia or India, all synonymous. Ania, right? Asia is Ania. Ania. One letter rule. Ganges, boss. Right? Cathay, right? Look at Ganges. Look at Cathay. Look at Asia. Ganges, Cathay, Asia. Ganges, Cathay, Asia. What about India, Superior? Oh, instead of Asia, right? We got, we still see Florida. We see Cathay. Cateo, India Superior. Now they said the Ganges in India. Now it's called instead of Asia, India Superior, but we still see the same Cathay. And somewhere to the left would be the Ganges, somewhere near the West Coast. Cathay. Cateo, and Cate means pure land, a pure land. You put a K in front, you got the Kata, the Kara Kata, or the tribe, you know, they say of Presta John, you know, of in the Mongol flow, it would be the Kara Kata. The Kata is the Cate, that's how you get the Catholic. The Cate is how you get the Catholic, my dog, pure land. Just like the Rome is Ramon, meaning the pomegranate from the promised land. Promised land, pure land, pomegranate, granada. All this is right here. Ganges is right here. And what's so special about the Ganges is that they're saying it is the San Banyan River, which means that the tribes that are in exile are also over here. That they just found us over here, that we've been in exile protected until the partition was lowered, right? We've been in India Superior protected when we're in code. Rabbi Abraham Pritzel says the Ganges is the Salmon Yama. And that's something right there. <laughs> that's something right there. And then they're mentioning the Kofar Al Tarak over here. Another Jewish traveler, Benjamin Tadulu, related there are men of Israel in the land of Persia who say that in the mountains dwell four of the tribes of Israel, namely the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Zebulon, the tribe of Asher, the tribe of Natali. We got that right. They are governed by their own prince. Joseph the Levite, among them are learned scholars. They sow and reap and go forth to war as far as the land of Cush by way of the desert. They are in league with the Kofar al -Turak. Pagan tribesmen, here we go. So first they said infidel with the Kofar. Now they give us another word to further <laughs> connect the fact that this is a Mohammedan derogatory term that they're just or they turn their name into a derogatory term. Kofar al Tarat called Kafir translated as infidel or what? Pagan. And they're rocking with the Presta, but they're not Mohammedans, so they're called pagans by the Mohammedans. But they're the tribes of Israel that are being called pagans. Same way that the Christians call these natives pagans, right? Savages, the Saracens, the Hebrews, pagans to the Christians, and we're pagans to the Muslims too. Mohammedans. Because we disbelieve in 
this Muhammad flow because we are believing in our creator, M-H-O-E. So these Kofar are now pagan tribes, men who worship the wind, live in the wilderness. During his visit to Arabia, he wrote, these tribes, men are of the tribes of Reuben. So how can they be these no-nos having people that we just read, these menacing looking people, but they're slaying everybody and they're rocking with Israel? This person, <laughs> this is why we get multiple viewpoints, this rabbi, <laughs> <laughs> this translation, at least, is saying that these tribes, man, are Reuben and Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh. So the other four tribes were over there in the mountain. The Kofar, who they're calling pagans, are the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh. So now you got seven tribes. That's why they're rocking together. And they're called pagans to the Mohammedans. This is why we got to read and recon. Their seat of government is a great city surrounded by the mountains of the north. The Jews of Kabar. Here we go again. <laughs> I'm out of here, man. Now you see clearly it's popping up everywhere. Have built many large fortified cities. The yoke of the Gentiles is not upon them. They go forth to pillage and to capture booty in conjunction with the Arabs, their neighbors. Are checking. Kabar. The Jews of Kabar are the same Hebrews of the Hebrew, right? Because the Kabar is still the Kibar. Kabar. The Kabar is still the Kibar. Kibar, Kiber, Kever, Eber, Ibaru. That Kabar is still Kabar, my naga. What do they put an extra I or E in the dodging the vowels? It's still the Kyber. It's still the Hebrew. Heber, man. It's still the same. <laughs> Same starting point, the same Cavera, the same Arizona, the same New Mexico, the same Utah, Colorado, the same Cavera. Concord. We're talking the same Cavera because the Cavera is still the Cabal. The Abba. And it's still connected with the same Phoenician deified Naga king called Preston, the Kuiper, the Kuba. The Afghan is the Benjamin flow. Afghan is the Benjamin flow. And the Kofar again is also mentioned in the Lost Tribes of Promised Land by Ronald Sanders, man. Let's get some of that for the dismount. First, last promise, let's get some of that blacked out, black screen. Let's go flat drop, and then we're going to come uh, talk a little more. Fight Naga, you know. Belly flop into uh, press to 62. Connect that, you know what I mean? Matter of fact, uh, how y'all how y'all wanna do it? Yeah, let's do it that way. Let's do it that way. Hey, Lawa to my Shabbat. We just surfing the wave, man. Real simple. <laughs> Real simple like my life. Let's get it back for a stack. This is the unblacked out version. 
Still recorded. I don't know how they blacked it out, but here we go, man. We ain't gonna trip on it. Let's get some of this Drisnop and surfed away. We're talking about the selling of Joseph, which has everything to do with the Ethiopians and the Abyssinians, because he's calling us Ethiopians right here in America. Love to let's find the truth, man. Because <laughs> that's all we need to set us free. Let's get it. Let me see if this full screen works. That's all I want. And again, you see it right here. Our blessed Savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song and set it to an excellent new tune. So who told there to give us a new tune? The Pope to change the Sabbath day to Sunday, right? Who chose you to who told you to change the holy the creator's holy day, right? Who gave you the authority? That appears like a clear violation, boss. Who gave Hijack City the authority to take away our ancient love song and replace it with what they call an excellent new tune, which all ought to be ambitious of learning, being converted? These Ethiopians, as black as they are, seeing they are the Sons and daughters of the first Adam, brother and sisters of the last Adam. And also, they ought to be treated with the respect agreeable boss. This is what we're talking about right here. This is where we are right now. This is where we are right now. Hold up, let me get my sound going. I don't want to have it like drop this time. We got the visual, but we didn't hear nothing. I got y'all. You know, they just playing. They playing. You see, they playing. I gotta go. There we go. Man, playing. They, they, they on that play. Play. My bad. My bad. I'll back it up so we can get it. I'm gonna do a double, triple dismount. I'm gonna get some of this. We're gonna get some oppressive 62. There we go. Get some lost tribes on the way out of here. I might take it to chapter one. Because really, like, there's so much that we still didn't dig on in the book that really, you know, helped pop a lot of this off for us, man. So we'll, we'll get back into all that. Man, let's go. Oh, we're on this play, play. Yeah, something about this, they really don't want us to vibe to. Now I got to get my audio going. Before it was a black screen. What's wrong with just playing the drop, you know? Just playing the drop. I got y'all. Oh, shit. Sure. This is one of the, you know, we always got a Hawaii moment. Let's just take our Hawaii moment. <sighs> wow. Wow. It's all happening. Wow. 
my guess would be what Noah okay. repopulated after the flood. We the last Adam. So here we go. Sons and daughters of the first Adam, brother and sister of the last Adam, and the offspring of Hawa. Back to that Indios flow, right? Indios of God, offspring of God. They ought to be treated with a respect, agreeable boss. Now, this is written way back when. <laughs> Again, 1700s, selling of Joseph. So this whole drop is about the selling of Israel into slavery. I'll leave it for you. You get the drop because we know what old Germany looked like. We know what these Ethiopians, these genuines look like. Let go. Shout out to uh, Real History WW. You know, we've been digging all these paintings, not drawings, paintings like this one. Let go. Of black Germany, history of the Black Holy Roman Empire. Otto, right? The first. Edith of England. Niggas. <laughs> this is Casper. Casper the friendly ghost, man. What happened to Casper, though? What they do to Casper? Yeah. The Black Romans. The Black Germans. The Black Russians. The Black Americans. The Black Asians. The Black Africans, right? Everywhere. The Black Australians. So where did these other people come from? <laughs> We're back to talking worlds beyond the pole. Casper the friendly ghost, the black king of Germany, is Casper. Yeah. Straight up, right? Casper the friendly ghost. Ain't that something, man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll turn a knock into a ghost. <laughs> White ghost. <laughs> now, not even a swarthy ghost. <laughs> Then you got this uh, drop right here, German Moors of Strasbourg by Mark Washington. <laughs> and here's these swarthy genuines, these Germans fighting off uh, which looks like Caucasian wild men. <laughs> and this is who became the Germans in their images today. There was a fight to take Germany. And without our power fighting for us out of cold, we had no chance in the long run until we got back to MHOE, my nine. But you see what the Germans are fighting. You see what these genuines are up against. Wow, man. By the time we see this German ice wall and all this stuff, these are the Germans, man. The mm -hmm. Swarthies. Black Germany, Prince of the Holy Roman Empire. You remember this guy? Yeah, they tried to throw you off and call him Prince of on the Congo, Prince of the Congo on a visit to Portugal. Know that the prince wears European clothing and icons, a royal coronet or cap, two versions of the Teutonic Knights of the Holy Roman Emperor's cross patty on his bed. The Iron Cross, version commonly used by the modern German military, and the triangular close tip version of the cross patty. These types of crosses are also common on British. British. The Brits are black. The Germans are black. <laughs> Russians are black. Romans are black. So the British heraldry, uh, because the current British royalty are of German extraction. <coughs> con, con. So the German connection connects with the Brit connection, which are all swarthy, which explains why the Kumse was tribing up with certain of the Brits because they were still swarthy cousins and family. And, of course, you got black-ass King Charles. Black as in wicked, my nightmare. 
black isn't wicked. 1500s, yeah, Columbus found you in 1492. Here comes Black Charles. So who's signing off on this? Man? These Germans are swarthy. <laughs> and these swarthies being connected to Antarctica or Tara Santa Conca. Are we seeing clear? Y'all seeing clearly? Huh? <laughs> We can put it together, even in their Mercator projections. Look how big Antarctica is just covering so much, like it's ready to wrap around, right? It's not some little blob anymore. No, it's a big, huge, it's bigger than all these lands together, man. And it connects to more worlds. Germans are swarthy. Benjamin Franklin told you so. So they're searching. They turn Antarctica to this little blob now. Amari, uh oh. Amari Theodorus, uh oh. And you know, now we say, okay, well, now that we know we're not spinning on a ball, because a planet is a plane and the plane is flat. <laughs> this German ice wall thing is flat, and these gateways are shown. You know, we start to get even a clearer perspective that this is an infinite plane that the creator continues to create. And we don't know how many ice walls, you know, how many worlds are within what they would call the greater dome. You know what I'm saying? We'll be, shout out to Dizzle Fitty with that great drop. This one got five ice walls. They got this inner sun in the middle that they say is like a newborn sun, plasma popping off, right? We got the uh, water, look at the arrows, right? Going clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. What kind of vortex does it create? What kind of energy magnetism does that create, my noggin? Why is this called the Forbidden Channel? And why is this Hell's Island, man? Atlantis way out here. Interesting, right? Samaria in here. You know, was was all this out here originally in here? You know, is this is this going back in the past and the future? We talk time and east and west. I mean, clockwise, counterclockwise. When you go clockwise, you're going east. That means you're coming to America, baby. <laughs> coming to the Far East, man. Yeah, we're having a good time with these maps because we have orientation pies now. We got foundation. A true map of the earth. Oh, well, true. To be true is to be genuine. To be genuine is to be jerk. <laughs> And even Jeannie he told us in the world's beyond a pole that you keep going straight, you run into more land, more water, my life, more vegetation. Nineteen fifty six, January thirteenth, members of the United States expedition. Accomplished a flight of 2,700 miles, 2,700 miles from the base of McMurdo, uh, McMurdo Sound, which is 400 miles west of the South Pole, and penetrated Atlantic extent 2,300 miles beyond the pole. Radio announcement confirmed by the press February 5th. I love this poem right here, man. We're talking vast new lands that they're finding. <laughs> exhibition after exhibition. 1957, the enchanted continent in the sky. Land of everlasting mystery. Arrow bird. How do you have land in the sky, Paul? 
You know, we're talking about heavenly land, celestial land. This is why these hijack gods promise their heavens, because they're just promising more land in the sky. But is it outside the great dome, right? Is it outside the firmament? Or is it trapped in the barrier? And what do the what do firmaments have to do with the great ice wall? Only dreams are true. The tangible and real on which our lives are based was yesterday's idea, a rosy picture traced by some quaint visionary, impractical half crack, painting his fancies airy, and now it's a solid fact. Whatever we hold stable, dependable and sane, was once a hopeful fable of castles built in Spain. Before the fact, the fancy, before the deed, the dream, that builds by necromancy, sorcery, witchcraft, the hard material scheme. It's all sorcery. All this material scheme is sorcery. So all your towers that shimmer, your lamps that light the sky, for once a tiny glimmer within some seer's eye, sorcery. They just making this stuff up, making us believe it, making it a hard material scheme because we believe it, we materialize it, but it's just a fancy and it's just necromancy. Time makes our empire scatter. But we shall build anew, for only visions matter, and only dreams are true. Burton, Brady, pop off, man. We've been jumping in and out of this drop because all the time it's going to tell you what it is. Get it from here. Belly flopping. It is the globe symbol which conveys the false idea for press and public. Page 22. Put the link over the pole from one side of the earth to the other side as possible. That symbol does not attest <clears throat> to the realistic extent of the earth or the earth's factual relation to the universe whole it is simply a convenience of archaic theory it was never anything else trips from alaska to spitsbergen and vice versa represent movement only in the west to east and east to west direction they were never journeys due north from the arctic circle to and over the pole no explorer has ever moved over the pole point north or south and arrived on the other side of the earth in a matter indicated by the globe symbol. If movement, if movement could be made over the pole and if it were possible to return to the starting point on the opposite side of the supposedly isolated globe, earth, there could be no possibility of going beyond the pole, earth, as has been accomplished since 1928. No beyond could exist unless it were the originally conjured space, the formidable factor prohibiting airplane flight or other movement in a northerly direction from one side of the North Pole area and arriving on the opposite side. As the globe symbol indicates, is that endless land extending beyond the pole point. That land, unknown to the theories of 1543, is the land its author's treaties described as early as 1927 and it is the land beyond which rear admiral richard evelyn Byrd, u.s navy a naval task force penetrated in february 1947 the ideal factor of land beyond applies as a prohibiting agent to any southerly movement over the south pole which would permit return on a northerly course to other areas of the mathematically prescribed quote globe earth. All <laughs> movement north from the North Pole and south from the South Pole must of physical necessity lead beyond the earth's northern and southern mathematical boundaries and it leads directly away from and beyond the conjured, the spell 
the necromancy of the globe, Earth. And it should be remembered that the North, so-called North and Southern Earth were only assumed. Bang. They were never fact. <laughs> Further, the assumptive value was imposed, my not more than 400 years ago at a time when restrictions on polar expeditions prohibited determination of factual terrestrial extent, it should also be held in mind that the earth could not be circumnavigated, cannot be circumnavigated north or south within the meaning of circumnavigate. However, certain around the world flights contributed to popular misconception that the earth has been circumnavigated north and south. You want to circumnavigate your house, go in a circle around your house. That's what it looks like on a flat plane. That's all circumnavigate means. You're going in a circle. You want to circumnavigate the liquor store, go in a circle around the liquor store. You want to circumnavigate that park, drive in a circle around the park. Or take a boat in a circle around America and you went in a circle. But you, it has nothing to do with a sphere or popping out any part of the ball. You're just going in circles, boss. You're just going in circles. <laughs> God. 178 worlds beyond the pole, they say. <laughs> At least it's 178 worlds within the Great Dome. Shout, shout out Dizzle Fitty for this drive, man. It's just amazing. Another nice confounding masterpiece talking about, you know, how many worlds could be within the Greater Dome. Get the drive, man. We went over some of the last time. Also got some of that navigator drive last time. Man. We'll keep this flow going. We'll keep the flat drop, you know, it, um, you know mixed in, immense within uh, the, the uh, press the drop because the orientation pies and press the time of the map drop go hand in hand with the indigenous truth and the code keeper in you. When they, when they say 178 worlds, are they talking flat, spread out, like planet, boss, and etymology, boss? Huh? Did they conjure up witchcraft to turn flat to a spinning ball, boss? Did they make something devious? Did they repel it? Did they dissuade it from the right path and bewilder a naga? Got you arguing, talking about you spinning at a thousand miles per hour. Boss, a planet is flat. Spread out. <laughs> Don't be making nothing devious. Don't be making nothing devious. Because that's what they're doing. <sighs> right in our Facebook. Like I said, man. We're going to keep, you know. This flow going, this, this this rhythm going. When we talk orientation, and we talk vibration, you know, because this is what we do. That's what the Nagas do. Let's uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Italian P and C. You know, like I said, you know, already had some drop on the press of flow, but it was one I didn't quite get, and maybe we can get a piece of that and let that take us into the next drop. 139 on deck. Wow. Let's go. <laughs> My nigga, this, this journey is a dream. <laughs> Only dreams are true. Only dreams are true. The Wada, my cons, for surfing the wave. Nine above the barrier, man. Above the barrier. But the greater dome, man. <laughs> hey, it's all happening. So this one, you know, says they mentioned some press to drop, and we'll get this for the dismount. Mysterious and forgotten lands. Iceberg explained. Italian P and C. One more again. Huh. Garden of Asparites. That's Asparites. Foreign people. Okay, all right. Let's dig on it. Hey, we out of here, baby. Let's just keep being hijacked free. Just remember, man, stay hijacked free. You know, 
I know it seems obvious, but you know, hijacks waiting always around the corner. So. As soon as we said hijack free, they want to restart our drive, man. See? I already had to reload it. Tried to black us out. Let's go. Feel that vibration coming on or not. Both part to the bottom. This. Just like a real iceberg. The video goes from the top, meaning the most visible part, to the bottom. <laughs> He's building his iceberg. Let's see how he has Prester John's kingdom right there in the middle. Shit. <coughs> Garden of Eden, Flo, and Mary, and Moo all together. See, Bola, Manaki, Kate. Everything we're talking about is right here in the recon. Bam. Let's go. Bottom, the part nobody sees or knows about. This iceberg has around 40 entries, divided in six different layers, one more mysterious than the other. Mm. Last time, we managed to cover the area about the iceberg, with the most known entries. Then, we took a look at the top of the iceberg, finding out more about partially mysterious topics. And then, we started to dive into the unknown, with Colchis and Lemuria. Today, we'll continue from where we last left off. Remember to subscribe to the channel and comment under this video to help it spread to the algorithm and suggest you part 3, the final part of this iceberg, when it finally comes out. Now, let's get to it. Samir. Prester John's Kingdom. This is a topic I recently discussed in the context of the second ring beyond on the Ice Wall series I'm working on. There, we saw how Prester John's successor state in the hypothetical continent of Azania might still go on to this day. But here, I'll do my best to tell his story in history. The name of this legendary figure is first recorded in 1145, and his existence was still believed in up to the 17th century. When Africa fell to the Caliphates in the early Middle Ages, it was thought that the land of the Monophysites and the Copts would be lost forever to Islam. And so, the popular consciousness of the Europe of the time accepted the lands below the Holy Land as territories ruled by Muslim states. But one element rose up in the late Middle Ages that changed the perception of religion in the land of Qam. This was Presser John, a man both king and priest of a huge Christian empire in the distant lands, locked in a continuous war against Islam. Originally, it was thought that the location of Presser John's empire was in Asia, but after 1441, when an ambassador representative of a hidden Christian African kingdom reached the Christian Council of Florence, the area of John's realm shifted to Africa, more specifically Abyssinia, identified as the land of origin of the free Magi that brought gifts to Jesus after his birth in the Bible. Magi. The Christian realms had always wished for an ally against the Islamic foes, and the story of Presser John was exactly what they needed to find hope of a Christian resurgence during the Crusades. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, the prophecy of Abyssinia rising up against the infidels and conquering the lands of origin of Muhammad was widespread across the patriarchs. Overall, the belief in Presser John's realm was almost universal, and when, during the Age of Discovery, the Portuguese would discover Ethiopia during their travels to the Indies, they would identify it as the Kingdom of Presser John. Only during the 17th century would academics like German Orientalist Hiob Ludolf demonstrate that there was no real connection between Ethiopian kings and Presser John, ending the validity of the century-spanning legacy until now, when the idea was once again brought to light after many more researches. Mu. The sunken continent shares much with Atlantis, but its origin is way more recent. Its first appearance is in the works of Augustus Lepon that in 1864 mistranslated the Truano Codex, a Mayan work of literature describing Yucatan's history, with the Landa alphabet. 
he would find that the word Mu referring to a lost land, and he would identify it as Atlantis, claiming that the civilization of Egypt was started by Queen Mu, a refugee from the sunken continent of Mu, with other refugees fleeing towards Americas and becoming the Maya. The submerged continent was popularized by James Churchward, a British occult writer that placed it in the Pacific Ocean, from the Mariana Trench to the Easter Island, explaining the loss of the continent as a result of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Even more modern figures, such as Ataturk, founder of the modern state of Turkey, was interested in the concept of Mu, and identified it as a possible homeland for the Turks. Ogigia Ogigia is the mysterious island described in Homer's Odyssey. During Odysseus' journey back to his motherland, the island of Ithaca, Odysseus stumbled upon Ogigia, where the nymph Calypsus detains him for seven years and intends to marry him. Eventually, Odysseus is allowed to leave the island following the intervention of the gods. The island was described by many as being the furthest point west from Ulysses' starting location, so Greece. Some associate it with islands near the Straits of Gibraltar, others think it's the mythical Atlantis, while some modern figures, like Ruahidri of Life Behareg, believe it's in Ireland. Ogigia is also one of the topics that were mentioned in Tidy Bay on the Ice World series, in this case, the original one, and it was inspiration to the island of Ogigia, which was called the Island of Doom there. The Garden of the Hesperides Like many hidden lands in ancient Greek mythology, the Garden of the Hesperides makes no difference. The Hesperides were a group of nymphs of the evening, daughters of the titan Atlas, the divine entity that held up the entire world upon his shoulders. They lived in a lush garden that featured some of the trees of golden apples, which were a wedding gift from the Promolder Gaia to Zeus. A dragon called Ladon was said to be the protector of this garden, killing whoever tried to steal the golden apples. In more modern times, it was realized that these golden apples probably referred to oranges, a fruit widely unknown to Europe. Yeah, uh, people say the golden apples are also the pomegranates or the Chinese apple. And what does this um, dragon have to do with the dragon that's in the garden Eden flow? Uh oh, with the serpent in the garden flow, right? The dragon in the garden. before the Middle Ages, which meant that the garden itself could have existed as some sort of sanctuary to the sacred oranges of Atlas. Some of the proposed locations of the famous garden were Portugal and southern Spain, both areas that grew oranges before the rest of Europe. Sheba Also known as Saba, this kingdom was well known to all of Christendom and to the Jews due to its presence in various passages of the Bible. Mm -hmm. In the Holy Book, the Queen of Sheba would have visited the legendary King Solomon. Bang. Even in the New Testament, Sheba is mentioned in the Book of Matthew and Luke. Ethiopian sources place the location of the kingdom in the eastern regions of Ethiopia. This is in contrast to the placement of Sheba as a kingdom between modern-day Yemen and Djibouti, as it grew rich through the trade along the Rinsens route. Even sources in the Quran tell of a lavishly rich Sheba, in control of all the spices and the fertile plains of the Arabian Peninsula, the part called Arabia Felix. The and Sheba would be Sibola on the American map. Sheba is Shambhala. Shambhala is Sibola is Sheba. <laughs> the presence of Sabaeans. Shout out Daniel Lowe. Sabaeans, all this stuff. Connected to Queen Mothers, man. <laughs> Connects to the Queen Father with well, the King Fathers, man. The Prestors and the Shebas always came together. Let's get a couple more minutes for this man. The name of the people of the Kingdom of Sheba is also well attested historically, as their writing script was so popular, it still influences some of the languages spoken today in Ethiopia and Eritrea, such as Amharic and Tigrinya. Okay, okay. Thule, known in medieval and. Alright, so get, go get the drop. You know, he got that drop in time PNC. You know, also has that second ring drop. 
Uh, we got some drop out of last time as well, you know what I mean? Which is, you know, again, independent research is connecting this world beyond a pole flow, you know what I'm saying, uh, to, you know, this orientation, you know what I mean? This Presta flow, this lost tribes flow, this Israel flow, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, so we don't have to go too far, you know, to, <laughs> to be in the flow, to be in the vibration of what's really going on. Again, the, the British Museum got the uh, Presta flow. You know what I'm saying? Right there, you know, in India Superior, right here in America. And I mean, it, it's worth noting, you know, that one place connects to another place, connects to another place. And it doesn't have to be side by side. You could be talking about the fifth ice ring, right? <laughs> the seventh ice ring could still have vortexes. And even this researcher admits that, you know, he's like, yeah, all this could be connected through vortexes, yada, yada. So we got to realize and see clearly that it truly is all happening. This vortex connects with that vortex, connects with this uh, portal, you know, like Godzilla movies, you know, the Marvel flows, the spinning animation flow, you know what I'm saying? The truth sounds strange in fiction, but that's why they put it in the Marvels and the anime and cartoons and all this other stuff, man. This is for you to get, man, but we've been surfing the wave, you know, taking all that uh, Presta John second ice ring flow. And, you know, again, he, he connects <laughs> with the possibilities of this all being, you know, vortexes that connect these things. You know, they can dip in and out these ice rings mighty fast with the right technologies, man. So expand your mind, Bone. When we talk Presta John, we are talking... We're also talking the present and we're also talking the future. You know, you're talking King of Kings, you're talking dragons, you're talking land of giants, Gog, Amen, Gog, right? You're talking scripture, right? Priest King, whom I will raise up for you, Jeremiah 30, search for Hawa and King David, Hosea 3, right? One shepherd forever, Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel 37, covenant of Shalom with David, covenants forever. Oh, oh, yeah, this one. Crazy sounds in here. Woo. <laughs> That's the worst commercial. It's the worst commercial I've ever seen. Y'all need to redo that. Just a bunch of sounds and goofy. And I don't want to waste too much time on them. So I hope you guys agree with me on the Azania topic. And if you don't, you're free to leave the comments and explain. Let's get a piece. Best dismount all time or not. The kingdom of President John right in your face, Bob. Italian PNC. Like church. Of course, this is in the setting of medieval times. So if you were a Christian, you kind of had to have contacts with the Catholic Church. <coughs> Even the Orthodox Christians, which were the, um, the Christians that developed after um, uh, 1054, so in the Eastern Roman Empire and the Slavic populations up here, still had contacts with the Catholic Church, even if there were not really good contacts. But to have a Christian realm, a big empire, a big empire that was Christian and not be anywhere near Europe and also not be linked with the Pope, the Papacy and the Catholicism was something crazy to medieval Europe and medieval Christianity as a whole. Because it wasn't Christian. With their labeling Christian, they also labeled this story. And that means you're connected to an old king renowned for wise counsel. So they didn't have to connect to no European Pope. These Prestes, these Hebrews, even the Mongols and Genghis Khan, they said, man, the Pope better come bow down to us. We ain't bowing down to no Pope. So what do you think the Prestes talking about? This is king of kings, man. Ain't got to check in <laughs> with no hijack. Hijack. They're trying to hijack. They try to check, you know, check out what we do. You know what I'm saying? Get the drop. So it just didn't make sense, but yet they all knew something like that existed. So it was crazy, but they did not know where it was. And this come, and this is where basically this whole thing comes to mind when it comes to this kingdom of Prester John. So is it possible that Azania was not here, but was actually outside of the second ring? And is it possible that?
no presser drone was not where we were going to um, see that it was proposed it was but it was actually right here so first of all let's see um or like the british museum right it was right here then you gotta say what does right here right have to do with right there right if we know we know that they just found us here what is right here and Preston John being on the map in the British Museum, 1530. And India Superior right here. And you don't see no North America, boss. This is just India Superior. Preston John, man. Cathay, Mexico, Cuba. What does this got to do with right right, right there? <laughs> kind of vortex. And, you know, Preston John's right over near Arizona. And then what does Sedona, Arizona, the Grand Canyon, have to do with portals and vortexes? That can pop it out <laughs> past the second ice ring, boss. Because that's where he's showing this kingdom of Preston John outside two ice rings. It is hard to find. Navigate. Basically, something about this Preston John. His wealth and power were unmatched and legend. Right. And the only thing about him more famous than them were his animosity towards the Mohammedans, the Muslims, since he was said to be surrounded by them and his country's existence at stake. Because so this Negro, Islam, Christian, you know, even if he was an Israelite and he was out of cult. So, what does that mean? Basically, it means that Presser John was not only a single figure, but it was also some kind of dynastic role, uh, like a leadership role, like you would call a king or an emperor or something like that. So, it was not a single person in a single time period, but something that existed for centuries. And it was also something that was at odds with the Muslim powers of the area. The question is, what if the Muslim powers were able to just defeat him and he was forced to flee so next from that let's see his proposed location on maps because of course this is not only a matter of what he was who he was but also where he was because of course europe had heard about this presser john if they well, we just saw his location on the british museum map in america we know they're looking for him in africa at some point when they caught that ethiopia but we also know they're calling this Ethiopia here and Samuel Seawall selling a Joseph just called you Nagas in America, Ethiopians. Boss? So happened. If they had heard about this Christian empire, but they was not sure where he actually was and where this Christian empire was even located. So, when it comes to its location, there is much debate to be had. Some during the Middle Ages identified his realm with the ones in Tartaria and Mongolia. We just did a video on Tartaria, uh, the second last video we did, and it was basically this area right here. Uh, basically what I'm doing with my mouse here. Mm -hmm. What does this Tartaria have to do with this Tartaria? Because <laughs> on the maps on India Superior, they also called this Grand Tartaria. And see how it's connected, basically, with North America, boss. So y'all peoples are stripping, right? Then they start looking in Africa, and then they start, they stop looking over there, right? <laughs> Remember, they searching for 500 years, boss, man. I'll leave the links. You get the drop. I'll leave the links. You get the drop. We're talking genuine era, genuine a rabbi, a rabbi proper. We're talking genuine German truth true real knowledge right what real knock are you searching for from 1145 <laughs> to 1645 right cause who or who is Preston John and all I can tell you is that the investigation continues because they're clearly looking for him searching and investigating Hosea 3 say you're gonna return to the creator Seek the creator directly, M-H-O-E, K-T-C, and then search for Kanda We and be dripping in that in that water, that that man sauce. Yo set, take the we. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on number 139. And it's all the way fine. <laughs> it's all happening. Shallow. 
Stay up. Suit up. Choose up. Da wa da. Allah wa. And remember, see that description below. Ka -ka. Get in the drop and get your press the pack three for only twenty five before the price doubles. You know what I'm saying? And all that because Ka -ka. the price is going up. <laughs> all this is a whole lot of work, a whole lot of effort, and these flash drives, you know, are costly. So it's going to go up. I'm trying to make it. A1, like the sauce for my guys, getting the early bird special. If you want all three for 45, then that's what you put on the Cash App. 432 to drop radio on Cash App. All right. And hit us up, 432 to drop at gmail.com. And get a, get your shipping or any inquiries or anything you need. And, you know, we got you one thou wow because you're the community, man. You're the tribe. You're the real ones. You're the Germans. You're the genuines. You know what I'm saying? You are Preston John. Allah wow. La wa, you are the Germans. You are the genuine. Take this time, Anaga. Make sure you get the drop. You know the press the one, two, three conglomerate will be ninety after this Shabbat, this Friday. So if you ain't got on the list to get, you know the first wave of Presta John conglomerate packs, which we'll have. This is one thirty nine. We'll probably be at one forty by then. So. 139, 140 parts, my I get to <laughs> right on one flash drive. So get the drop, 45 for now, and, uh, you know, A-Hop, because all the supports our community, all the supports are flowing. My knock has been keeping the water flowing from numero uno, man, day one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I told you we're going to do a triple dismount. So that was the single. This is the double. Getting back in the Phoenician DFI drive, like I said, um, was this press the 62? Press the 62. Yeah, I pray all y'all having a, you know, a high, you know, strong. You know, they say weak. <laughs> we say strong, my nugget. And it's a true honor and pleasure whenever we get an opportunity like this, man, to put a few hours into the recon. Sometimes we don't got that much time. Sometimes I don't got that much time. You know what I mean, but. Whenever I could pop off one of these presses, man, you know, it's an honor. I feel like I'm, you know, like I had another child, like I had another baby, you know. <laughs> like we gave birth to something, you know what I mean? And we have about 129, or excuse me, 139 children now, man. So 139 Presta drops, you know what I'm saying? So get the playlist. You can get all that for free. If you want to support the packs, you can get them all on the flash drive. And get to drive, man. All right, man. Let me see what we got. We're going to pull up the double. Let go. Press the 62. Yeah, man. Only one. They shall have one ship. So don't let them hijack you with their JC. They got to try to mingle them in. They got to try to mingle them in. So you click on Britannica and all they're going to give us is some uh, New Testament hijack. Man, ain't that something? You wouldn't even know what to look for. We wouldn't even know what to look for. But you know what, man? You know what? That's cool. That's cool. Remember, we've been digging on the Capra now, right? That was part of the Copper... Eber, you know, and Capernaum is just the biblical Capernaum. But at this point, because now that we know that Capernaum, Capernaum is Kabari, is Kafira, is Capri, is, is Kiver, is Heber, is Kiber, Kyber, is Kiber, Kyber, is Kiber, is Copper, is Capernaum. Now that we know that this is a biblical place, and that it's supposed to be the home. They, they had to make it the home of JC because it's Judea, my not. <laughs> Capernaum is linked directly. This Naum 
who probably lived as far south in Judea, my name. It has everything to do with Judah or Utah, right? Judea or Utah, because we're going to be talking about the Ute Aztec. Aztec just means people of whiteness or righteousness, the righteous cons, the Aztec con of Ute, Utah, which is what? Utah, Y-U-T-A, which is what? Udaw, Y-U-D-A-H, which means high. Oh, living in the mountains, in the trees, my not Go. Lofty, righteous, Ute. Ute is Judah. Wow. Judea. 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 Copper nine. Kuiper. Eber. Judea. Where's Kaver? Where's this uh, Kiber? Where's this Kivara, Kuvera? Where is Kuvera? Where is Kuvera? Wow. Pretty sure I found a map somewhere of old Kuvera. Hey, can we say it together? Ania. 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 You see, the Ania connects with this Bering Strait. See, this area here is supposed to be this area right here. Preston John is guarding this wall, right? Right, which way? Now we see why we need this drop on flash drives. Why we need to separate from the internet and make sure we got copies, Manage. I'm going back. This is 62. We done more than doubled this, man. And it's some stuff I forgot, man. We done forgot more than, you know, many people have ever dropped. I'm like, <laughs> all praise our creators. So we got to go back. We got to get the records. The water to my car. Where is the gang is con invading from, man? Managa, this is the British Museum. So this is the Strait of Antioch. Right here, what they call the Barren Strait today. Right here, El Strato de Ania, Ania, right? So this will be the West Coast, right? This will be, you know, uh, Pacific Palisades, PCH, California, you know, all this stuff. And look at what we got here, Qua Vera, Regnu. <laughs> so there's a kingdom under the same title Quavera, my The same spelling, same title. And they are linking the Quavera or Capernaum with Judea. Back to the drop, man. <laughs> Back to the Yapa. All right, so this is the open secrets of India, Israel, and Mexico from Genesis to Revelation by Jane Matlock. So it's the same author putting the same drop in another book, my not. I can't make this up, my nigga. I can't make this up. We don't belly flop. Uh oh. Uh oh, boss. Oh, I'm so glad I got this so you can see it. So, so you know I'm not making shit up. All right. What I'm reading, you can see the drop right here, right? Oh, my goodness. You can see the drop, right? 
you can see the drop, right? Wow. Oh, oh, hey, hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm just surfing the wave, putting Lawa. stuff in, you know, putting the right things in, asking the right questions, That's right. my nine. That's right. Hey. The Kyber, its region is wealthy and abounding in rubies. Gold is found. Where's gold found in Kyber? Or Kavera? Let's which go. they spell Quivera, huh? Quivera, right? Q U I V I R. Okay. Q U I V I R. Right, right, right. 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 So now you know that Quivera, we derived our word copper, because there must be a lot of copper colored Nagas. Bang. Must, <laughs> must be a lot of copper colored Nagas around here. <laughs> like, holding down the region. I mean, we're talking about the seven cities of gold. Let go. Which is going to connect us with the Cibola or the Kaleluz, which means promised land. But the Cibola is also Sheba. Now they're going to make it, they're going to turn Sheba into the god of a, a Shiva. Mm. Because Shiva is really a uh, mysticism yeah. mythology around the actual Sheba Back. and the land of Sheba. Then they have deified it just like they did. What does it say on on uh, page six back in the Indian once ruled the America bu book? It says around 500 B.C. or earlier, a brilliant deified Phoenician Naga named Kubera or Kavera. Mm. So they deified the Naga. They deified the Naga. Hola, hola. Which one had the Kavera drop? Right. Managa, this is 62. We've been at it for a mighty long time. We in 139. Wow. Okay, okay. Lawa. I'll get that bigger again. I'll get it bigger again. Got press in the bank. All right, so you see it up here. Quivera, right? Come. <laughs> and back then, these U's and these V's are uh, interchangeable. Interchangeable, man. Let's act in the sound bath, man. You know, I, I need I need one more bath in the water, man, mm -hmm. for the dismount, man. One more bath in the water. Love to Ricardo Allego. Quivera is Quivera, all right? Quivera is the Phoenician Naga that was deified. Now they're turned into gods, right? They even call Joshua Shiva. They say Joshua Shiva. Then you got Queen Shiva. You know I mean, what what does Shiva have to do with Joshua though? What does Queen Khalifa have to do with Joshua though? Any relation? Any relation? Mother, son, aunties, you know. Any relation? Daughter? We got to start digging on that Sarah Cali. Oh, boy. That, you know, remember that Horace Butler drop? Come, come. We got to get that Sarah Cali so we can know if Joshua had a daughter. Is she uh, Queen Sheba? Oh. Is his mama Queen she I mean, are they related? So this is an American thing, right? <laughs> this, is an Amer this is all right here, my naga. This is all the same spot. Press the John. Kaleel. The Phoenician uh, deified Naga, right? Managa, we are still right here. Right? Let's go. Okay. Stay with me. For Come this on. Mount. I got you, Khan. We got you, Khan. So they derive the word copper from Kuvera or Kiver. They say the Bul Bulgarian king who became India's god of gold. <laughs> 
Didn't they just say that he was a deified Phoenician Naga? Talk on him, man. Now he's a Bulgarian king. Talk on that head, bro. Let's go. God of gold. See, because he got so much gold, he's deified as the God of gold, man. Mm. <laughs> Come on, man. I know without investigating that I'm going to find immense deposits of metal ores in the region, especially of gold and copper. Afghan. I keep wanting to put you in Afghan. But how can it be <laughs> Afghan when Quiver, Kaver, or Eber, or Kuver, or Kedver, or Quaveri, or Capernaum, is Judea, is Quivera, mm. is Quivera. Judah. Body bag for the illusion. Body bag. This is Judea, Judah. which is why Prester John is right here, the Grand Khan. Holding down the Grand Canyon. I mean, Kanye. This is Judah, which is why Come on. Utah is Udah. Let go. Body bag. Body bag. For the illusion. Bang. Uh -oh. Bang. Ping, pow. Ping, pow. This is Judah. Bang. Quavera. Let's go. Heber, copper. Eber, Hebrew. They can't stop the drop. Why did Columbus bring a Hebrew interpreter? Let's go. Why did Columbus bring a Hebrew interpreter to Talk find you? In Ania. I mean, this is where we got that map from. The mythical straits of Ania. The mythical straits of Ania. The, the straits, right? The Bering Strait, right? The mythical strait. It's all happening. So this, uh, you know, just digging on Marco Polo, because now we can dig on that and know where the real Asia is. I said, I said the real, the real Asia. Uh -oh. The real Asia. The real Asia. South America, Asia. South America, Asia. South America, the real Asia, my naga. The real India superior, my naga. Okay. Okay. So, straight to Annie, uh, This illustrator has placed Preston John and his neighbors not far from Mexico. <laughs> right? Preston John is not far from Mexico. The name of the maker of the map is not known, but it bears evidence of having been drawn in 1530. Presta John, not very far from Mexico. Mexico. I know it's fuzzy, but you know you see it. Mexico. All right. So this is also Quivera. <coughs> Con. So what does the prester have to do? Why is why is the prester? Why is the prester over this area? Why is the Phoenician deified Naga God of Gold, they say, right? Holding down the Anion, my Naga. Regnu means kingdom, so you have a Quivera kingdom and an Anion kingdom. And if Quiver is Judea, southern tribes, then would this be the northern tribes? My naga? Let go. Huh? What's up with these unicorn dragons? And you know, you know what's going on, man? <laughs> look like a unicorn dragon mermaid situation. All right, all right. I mean, look, I can't make this stuff up. So you got Hebrew, Eber, Heber, Kepri. Kefera, Kapira, Kipri, Kipri, Kapirnam, Kabar. Uh oh, Arizona, Old Dom, Babo, Kavera, Kavera. <laughs> Whoa. Or the Kwaburu in Arizona. See, they just giving all the dry. 
all the dry within the Texas and Mexican, Mexican, Coahuila, California, Coahuila. You wouldn't even know that this is all Coahuila, but it's Coahuila. Oh. New Mexico Grand Coahuila or oh. the Grand Canyon. Query, Sonori, <coughs> oh man. Canadian Quebec is from the Quebera, man. Quebec is Quebera. Cuba, didn't we just say Cuba? Hey, this is heavy drop, man. This is heavy. And, you know, we just dodging the hijack. Copper, 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 copper. Quebec, Quebec. So all this is the Quebec kingdom. Super heavy way. <laughs> Quebec, look how far, you know, it stretches, right? It keeps going. So it's not just a nagi. Where's North America? Huh. Where's North America? So you got Quivera that stretched all throughout this Mexico, Texas, you know, all that stuff. Antioch, you know, and they all rock together. Now we're just talking Shiva and Shiva, right? And I'm going to get a couple more lines for the dismount, but I don't. I want us thinking with orientation and how that we can connect Eber with Hebrew with this deified Phoenician Naga Keeper, which is Quivera, which is this Capernaum or just Judea scenario, you know what I mean? And we're just awaken, we're just waking up out of a real deep sleep, man. Mm. Are you waking up from that Ruach tardy ma? Let go. You've been tardy with that Ruach, man. Lawa. All right, so Preston John's not very far from Mexico. They say his idolatrous neighbors, because King David in the script has some very idolatrous neighbors, huh? Oh. Moab, Amon, oh. he's encompassed by all this hijack Psalm 83, Confederacy. Oh. Come on, man. Y'all still got the fire burning, man. <laughs> Y'all still got the fire burn. Wow. Wow. I'm just going to read you a couple more pages, belly flopping. We're going to belly flop a couple more pages. Now, they mentioned Cibola, right? Cities of gold, huh? Come on, page 29. When the foreign Judy, Judy, Judah warriors were visiting or ruling what is now American Southwest, they were impressed with the abundant crops of corn with which the Pueblo Indians were able to rest from the dry desert soil. In ancient Hebrew, Phoenician, Aramaic, and other Semitic dialects, the word for ear of corn is Sibol, or Siboleth, or Sibola. <laughs> the Judies, Judah, told the Aztec and others about the wealthy seven cities of Sibola. So they want us to think that some people from Little Indian, under the title Judies, came over here to India Superior and talked the indigenous Naga in the land of Preston John about the seven cities of gold. Whoa. Stop it, man. Just stop it, man, because now you're just being silly, Gene Matlock. You don't have to do all that just to try to connect Cibola to Little India. Not when Cibola's all over the maps already in big indie <coughs> God. you got all these links man pull them up man click the links below that's what they're there for click the links below because that's what they're there for <laughs> let's pull up that uh forbidden histories of america i mean it's gonna be the best dismount of all time man <laughs> my naga my naga oh uh, where i put it at my naga, we're my getting naga. little we're getting leaky we're getting leaky a little bit
Oh, there we go. Uh oh. Come on, man. Get out of your deep sleep. Get out of your tarde ma. Mm. <laughs> Papa. Man. Hey, most high over everything, man. Shout out to Ma. Let's go. Man. Just creating um, tidal waves, my life. Creating Hawa, you know what I'm saying? Superior Mem tidal waves, man. Love to the bro, love to the family, love to the Ether Squad. Keeping the water flowing at TDR. Make sure you download the app because we going way up. Download the 432 app, my naga, because we going way up. Go. By the time you're getting this, we already have discussed this on the radio. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so make sure you're in the classroom. Let's go. One more minute. I want to look at a couple of these maps. Let's try to, you know. Let's dig on some maps he put in here for us, man. Bang! Right there, right? Bang! See, so this book is called The Forbidden Histories of America by Daniel Lowe. Talking about the Utah history. He also has a book called The Treasures of Utah, which we read every Wednesday night. 432thedrop.com and he has a book called Net Fight North that we read every single uh, what is it Monday every Monday so get the drop my dog and the press the hour is back I mean we, we we popping off all the way up now you see this word septum this means seven city sita right okay So the seven cities are already here. We don't need uh, nobody from Little India to teach us about what's already here. Sevola is Sibola, which means promised land. Ka, ka, ka. And we see it popping up on all these maps already in Southwest United States. Sibola, 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 Sibola. Granata Nova. Now you got to know the importance of this Granata. It's from the Palma Granata. Palma Granata means what? Granata. Granada is Palma Granada, which is the Riman. The Riman. Managa. You know what I mean? This is connecting this promised land, Roman. But this is your title. They take the title Roman. They take the title Remani. But you are the actual Reman, Ramon, Remani. That is you. Oh, there's seven species of pom. Whoa. <laughs> the pomegranate is listed in the Torah as one of the seven species of fruits and grains that are special products of the land of Israel. So, hmm, where's Granata? Who are the Ramon? See, this is where we part ways with this author because he wants, you know, the Ramon, Ramon <laughs> to be some white people or some white kingdom, but we, the, the Ramon. Is the Roma is the pomegranata. This is where Roman is. This is Roman, my name. And we dodge in the hijack. Because we are connected <laughs> to the seven cities of gold. We're talking seven. We're talking the land of Israel. It's got nothing to do with Shiva. Everything to do with Sheba in Kabar or Kaber or Quavera, kingdom, Quavera, Quavera, that is Eber, <laughs> who's the Eberu, Managa, that means they found you in Quavera, where's that, <laughs> the 
land of the Preston. Land of Preston, John. Ania or Anan. Anion or Anan. Okay. Or the river Arna. Because you remember, Arnon is Ania. Uh oh. And when you try to search for, uh -oh. you know, uh, the Arnon, the biblical Arna, uh oh. You're going to get a whole, uh, <laughs> they switched all the Arnons or Anions to Arnon, so you can't look for Anion. You got to look for Arna. But originally, it's just Ania. But you want Arnon, right? You want Arna. <laughs> uh oh, we popped up. We're getting warmer. We see the Arnon River, which is the Anion. Ping pow. Straight of Anion is the Arna. Mm. I wonder if they're going to switch it up too, because the other ones. Oh. oh. They took the link down. I wonder why. <laughs> but you see what they're showing, that the Arnon River is the Anion. And, you know, go back and get those drops on the importance of the biblical Arnon, you know, discussing the borders between Moab and, and everything else. I mean, Oh, this a whole entire Anion race, huh? I'm Mesopotamia, huh? A kingdom, huh? So in the Bible, this is called the River Arnon, but originally it is the Anion. Anion or Anion is also Arna. <laughs> wow. Watch this, man. Uh, Anion. which is the Jordan River. <laughs> Whoa. So this Anion situation connects with the Jordan that was parted, right, by Moshe, parted by Joshua. So why, did, why do you think they, they switched it? So in your Bible now, It's going to say uh, Arna, and originally it said Ania. And this is, I mean, you know, every time I go over this, it's just phenomenal that we catch them slipping. Anion was the boundary of all south coast land occupied by the beyond Jordan. Right? <laughs> Extends from the Arna right, on the Anion. 
So what we found last time is when we click these, they it's like some algorithm, like they change all of the anions into the R9. <laughs> right in your face, bro. It's like this. Right in your face, bro. You see all these R nines? You don't see no anions no more. Let's get it bigger. <coughs> Anaga, this is in the fine print. All right, this is in a book called The Holy Bible Containing the Old and the New Testaments from Adam Clark. All right, so look, in the fine print, it says Arnon was the boundary of all the southern coasts of the land occupied by the Israelites beyond the Jordan. Now, see how it says Arnon when I click on it? But what happens in the Google search? It says Arnon here, right? Arnon. Managa here it says Ania was the boundary of all the southern coast of the land occupied by the so we catch them slipping in the algorithm. They're changing this even in the fine print. When you click on the PDF, they're changing the name Anion to Arna. Dang. Right in our face. Why? Why must they forcibly change it? Watch. Anion A-N-I-O-N. Or not. In the fine print here, what do you get? One letter. Arnon was the boundary of the South Coast. Arnon. But back here. Horace Butler got the one letter rule. <laughs> man, I mean, I, I just can't get enough of this, man. Here. <laughs> Anion was the boundary of the Southern Coast. Anion. Managa. Anion is Arnon, but they changing it to Arnon. Why? Because they don't want you to know that we're just talking Anya, which is the boundary, right? The boundary. So where's the Anion River? It's the boundary of the southern coast. So it must either be dividing the northern and southern tribes or like the biblical Arna. Mm. Right? So now we're just going to put in biblical Arnon. Now, now that we have confirmed Arnon is Anion. And that they're switching it right in front of our face. So you just take out the R and you got Anon. Like Anon Ben David. We've been digging on that with the Exilarchs who wrote the code Sefer HaMitzvah. Arnon is Anion. And how important is it? Mentioned in Numbers 21 as the border between Moab and the Amorites, valleys of Arnon. You know how many wars were fought over these boundaries? North of Arnon. So all this. Now look how they did this. Look at this. Look at this. Don't this look a whole lot like they're just uh, photo photoshopping this? But you wouldn't know that this is really uh, India Superior. This is really this. Preston John's land. We're talking Quivera, Copper, Khan. But they want to give you this. Oh, Middle East. But it's the same layout. Now look where they put the Arnon River. You see how it's literally dividing north and south? Running east to west. So where would the Arnon River be? Huh? It must be up here somewhere. I mean, dividing this east and west scenario. But now you're talking about the biblical rivers. Strait of Anion. <laughs> and that's why we're all 139th installment. Cause Khan, <laughs> Khan been popping off, man. The Drakhan's been popping off, man. Where would these rivers be, right? See all types of, of possibilities. I mean, 
Me dig on it, my knife. For the disc, man. <laughs> This is Anion, right? Straight of Anion. You got Azareth here across the way. Anaya over here. So now they'll say Asia, but then it was just Anion. There will be a river such as such as these, right? <laughs> that would be the Arnon or Antioch to separate these boundaries from these other tribes. Very amazing. Allah. Let's get some lost tribes. For the trifecta. La Waha for the investigation to seek the creator and Khan David. The anointed Khan, the anointed priest Khan. Anointed by Hawa. Covenant of peace, covenant of Shalawa. This is chapter 10. <coughs> Shalak. Making my dismount, getting my tea. <laughs> and we were talking about the Portuguese and how the Portuguese were searching. And this is kind of like their story, you know, of Alvarez. And he's trying to get out from this king of Ethiopia's um, court. You know, he's trying to get out. <laughs> And just like Preston John, you know, once you find them on accident, they'll probably keep you because they don't want everybody finding out where they are. You know what I mean? So he's asking for leave of who he's calling the Preston, but he's in uh, Africa, Ethiopia. You know what I mean? So he's not even in the right spot. But it says he went to ask leave of the Preston and we went with him and we urged it with great insistence and begged it out of him yet no order for it was ever given so far as is known Calvahan ended his days in ethiopia he too was a living symbol of the demystification of the east ending like the legend of Preston John in the abyssinian dust with that legend went for the time being all hope of a noble image of the Negro to counter the one that was coming with growing force out of West Africa. One of the most vivid depictions of the West African image now taking shape in the minds of many Portuguese can be found in the Esmeralda de Suto Orbis a geographical and historical handbook of the African coast written in about 1508 by Duarte Pacheco Pierre, from which we have already quoted with reference to Master Hall or Ka or Jacome, Hakome of Majorca. But just, they're going to go into, you know, their racistness or whatever, you know, trying to describe this depiction of the African. But Banaga, the noble image was gone. The noble image of the Preston was gone, right? The Preston? Just <laughs> understanding <laughs> that you got a kind of cause? Like Hosea 3 said, you went many days without a king. You, you, you didn't need a shepherd no more because you didn't want to be a righteous flock. Now they called us some out of Africa, some 
um, you know, slave off the boat, you know what I mean? Some type of just broke buck, broken down buck, buck, buck breaking, right? This other image, this black face, whatever they doing, they changed the image of the noble car and turn it into some just coming on off the boats from West Africa theory, right? All hope of a noble image of the Negro to counter the one that was coming, boss. With due meditation to erase your noble image and turn you into a noble savage. The noble Khan, the noble image of the Khan has been turned into the noble savage. Your savage nobles. But now we got our ancient love song back. We're back in order, back in code. And we can again meditate on who we are. And this don't match the image that just got off some slave boat. This reminds me of... <laughs> Jeremiah. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the wife host, that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bands, and strangers shall no more make him their bondsman, but they shall serve a while their power, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. What you doing outside the ice walls, Khan? <laughs> Where's the ice? On Antarctica's chest ball. <laughs> Khan. Yeah, they know what the press to look like. They know. Everybody knew. Nobody was confused that they was looking for a so-called black man. We know that. All these books about this so-called black priest kind, and we ain't never heard of it until Hawaii wakes us up, man, and we start searching. Now they were confused about the blackness, man. <laughs> the legend of the Christian so-called Christian prince, and he's a Hebrew, so they're calling him Christian, right? Living at the other flank of the Muslim world. Had excited Europe for nearly 300 years, but Henry the Navigator's zeal to find him may seem surprising in the light of the dismal history of race relations that was to ensue as a result, for by this time, most educated Europeans consider Preston John to be black. This does not mean that they had yet specifically identified him with the emperor of Ethiopia, as we understand that designation today. The geography of the Middle Ages was too vague for this. Ethiopia just meant a vast region of dark-skinned people, man, of black people. So this is what we're learning. This is what we're growing, that all these Europeans, and you know what they look like. They knew who Preston looked like, my nigga. The water for surfing the wave. Nine above the barrier with a car. I see y'all on Preston 140. 
Steya, Suda, Chuzah, Drop Nation, Allahu Akbar.